Now through February 16th, join a clean and spacious Planet Fitness for zero enrollment and only $10 a month. With tons of equipment and free fitness training, it's the perfect place for everybody to work out. Even me, Mr. I can't sleep at night, so I keep dozing off during the day. Especially you, Snoozy. You'll rest easier and feel fit-tacular. Wait, how did you get in here? Join in club or at planetfitness.com. Zero enrollment, $10 a month. Cancel anytime. Hurry, deal ends February 16th. See club for details. <laughs> My favorite part about that whole thing, though, with Sean Hannity is that he's not invited to the island. Oh, you're right. Like Sean Hannity <laughs> and all these other pundits, like they keep going back. Though, they, they're going to mention another pundit in a second. None of those people got invited to the fucking tropical fucking you're libertarian right. paradise. They're all sucking its dick from back in the hellhole. No, they're furious because Colbert got taken because they didn't realize it was satire. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. The best. Yeah. Ted Cruz. I wish John Galt would insult my wife. Oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> movie, movie, movie. Welcome back to the Gamcast, where each week we sample another selection from Christian cinema, because when it came time to hire my worst enemy, I was the only applicant. I'm your host, No Illusions, and sitting 700 miles to my immediate left is my good friend Heath Enright. Heath, welcome back. Am I being detained? I feel like I'm being detained. They keep Once again. making these. <laughs> Once again. I knew it was you three. Are. You have been. <laughs> Still. I think Cecil's being, Cecil's genuinely. Yeah, Cecil is absolutely. Cecil is being am, fucking guys. detained, my friend. Cecil, blink if you're being detained. God damn. He's blinking. <laughs> blinking so hard. I would hard. take the taser at this point. Yeah, right? I would just take the taser. <laughs> I'd get shot by a cop right now, happily. <laughs> <laughs> and sitting 900 miles to my northeast is my bad friend, Eli Bosnick. Eli, how are you this fine afternoon, sir? I would let Heath get shot by a cop. Well, right there you now. go. That's yeah. <laughs> not getting shot by a cop. Have you seen me? I look like every cop. Yeah, that's true. That's true. <laughs> kind of do. Maybe if we could convince them to commit suicide, they'd accidentally shoot you. <laughs> no. I look like a composite sketch of cop. That's me. That's, that's all of them together. It's me. <laughs> And also joining us today, we already mentioned him, but I might as well introduce him officially. From 900 miles to my north, 200 miles to Heath's west, and deep inside Eli's heart is Cecil Something Italian from the Cognitive Dissonance Podcast. Cecil, welcome back. It's sticky in here. It it's is. very sticky. Put <laughs> <laughs> a plaque in here. <laughs> <laughs> very narrow, too. So tell us, Heath, what will we be breaking down today? We watched Atlas Shrugged Part 3. Who is John Galt? That's in the title. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it's the story of a tantrum about sharing crayons, the political philosophy <laughs> for so grownups. Oh, God. Yep. And Eli, how bad was this movie? Well, if you're trying to cast the trilogy, but everyone you've cast dies like a Mr. Meeksy's clone after making a movie, <laughs> you... We'll love this third one. Once again, brand new cast. Yeah. Home cast. <laughs> yeah. God what? It, like, okay. Has this ever happened before in a trilogy <laughs> or even a, even a two part? Have they ever just completely recast? No, I, I don't, I don't think I'm, I'm not aware of possible. This. Probably. But what's crazy is the auto work actors from two wouldn't accept the calls from three. <laughs> That's insane. To yeah. Me. <laughs> well, so yeah, we have to point out what a precipitous drop off in budget this movie. Saw, right, so according to the internet, the first movie's budget was somehow twenty million fucking dollars. It you know made four. They spent it all on train footage, but yeah, go ahead. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> the second movie was less than ten. This one was about five. Right, Zeno's sequels here. <laughs> <laughs> but of course, dropping at an even faster rate were the returns. First one made four point six million. The second one three point three million, and this one a whopping, according to Box Office Mojo. $846,704. Ooh. Okay, but it'll never go to zero. So that's <laughs> right. <laughs> well, okay. So think about this. We made about half of that with our charity fundraiser last year on a budget of whatever we paid <laughs> Cecil's wife for that logo she drew. <laughs> right? <laughs> 
<laughs> and we've carried her logo over. We haven't lost well, right, the yes, logo here to here. The logo, actually. Logo. Yeah. What did we pay? A tote bag? A bottle of wine? <laughs> I just gave her one hug. That's all there I gave. One it's free one, hug. One, all right. one free hug. Five million dollar hug right there. So. Did she redeem it yet? Probably not. Right? <laughs> she doesn't touch me. We're married. <laughs> <laughs> now, is there anything you guys want to nominate this one for being the best at being the worst at? Yeah, I'm going to go with best worst character name. Yes, somehow. Okay, so we already met a Midas Mulligan. Uh huh. Yes. And uh, a Balf Eubank, <laughs> Balf? for example. Those are two existing names. Ragnar yes. Danish Jold. They jumped over that bar. <laughs> we meet <laughs> Cuffy Miggs. <laughs> Cuffy Miggs. In this one. I, my only regret in life is not getting to watch. No illusions. Watch this guy get introduced <laughs> and be like, "Fuck you, uh, Coffee Migs, Coffee Migs." Get out of here. Every character name is like somebody's lying. Yeah. It's like, what's your name? Yep. Six Coffee <laughs> Migs. Uh, all right. So I wanted to go with best worst exposition de evolution. Right. Keep in mind, we started at Train News Network, right? That was how they got everything into the first movie is they would just happen to look up at the news and they'd be talking about trains on CNN again, right? It got so much worse. It's dude, We basically, we have a narrator <laughs> that cuts in every yeah. seven or eight minutes and goes, uh, so anyway, um, <laughs> <laughs> it's so bad. Sir, do you mind reading this narration right before your child support hearing? I feel like you're not going to get to keep your kids. <laughs> mind angrily reading this? <laughs> yes, it's it's a pirate. It's yeah. a pirate. Yeah! Obviously, <laughs> for three it's the movies, <laughs> I have known what was coming. It's the pirate, guys. And it's, it's the saddest. It's the just it's more on the worst side for the pirate. It's so sad. This pirate spends the majority of his time at a fucking farmer's market. It it's the farmer's market. Yep, yep. And identifying planes while they're flying. Those are the two things he's got a superpower for. He makes really great apples, and he can identify planes from the he's ground. Checking like he's uh, like amazing mutant power. He'll be in the next X Men. See how squishy his fruits are. It's just that's what we want. Yeah, all the build yeah. up mm. for two. Movies. I have watched my dear sweet Cecil uh -huh. look into the sunset with a glimmer in his eye, pirate. waiting for the pirate. And it's just a fat guy at a farmer's market. I got a longshoreman selling me apples. That's what yep. I got. Yep. Yeah, that's it's what best. I got. Yeah. <laughs> Dock worker selling me apples. <laughs> <laughs> Ragnar Dennis, golden delicious. Right? <laughs> it's, not a, it's not a good pirate. That's all I'm going to nope, say. Not a good pirate. <laughs> And I'm going to go with best worst defense of their Kickstarter. <laughs> this is the best. So again, this is from the general trivia. The, the first piece of general trivia for the film is, quote, I'm not making any of these words up. Nearly half a million dollars of the film's budget was raised through the online funding site Kickstarter. Nearly? Wow. <laughs> this was claimed by many. To be ironic, since crowdfunding or charity mm -hmm. is in opposition to Ayn Rand's <laughs> philosophy of objectivism, <laughs> but that is incorrect, as objectivism only opposes forced charity. No, nope, not according yes. to and the little. That's well, well, not what that's, charity means. Also, yeah, I mean, can you? I don't think that. That's, I think that's an oxymoron. I yep. think robbery. You You're thinking of robbery. It's a, all, all right. right. Well, I'll tell you what, you might think that nothing happening can't have a conclusion, but we're going to prove you wrong. <laughs> Incorrect. Just on the other side of this break, we're going to break down all the wrapped through the alphabet and started using Greek letters like the National Hurricane Center at the end of the season list actors that are <laughs> Atlas Shrugged 3, who is John Galt. That's true. Lou, 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 doing billionaire stuff. Billionaire stuff is my favorite stuff. Mr. Bezos. Who are you? What are you doing here? My name is Eli Galt, and I represent a place that believes that men like you deserve more. You do? Yes. We're tired of the moochers who ride our coattails, and we're ready to invite you to join us. Moochers? Exactly. I'm in. <laughs> I thought you might be, Mr. Bezos. Here's your teleportation device. This? This is a gun. <laughs> yes, it does look like that, but that's merely so the common moocher doesn't recognize its power. Simply 
Put that under your chin, pull the trigger, and you'll be transported at last to a place where you'll be treated like the leader of men that you know you are. I don't know. It really looks like a gun. Like, really? I mean, look, Mr. Bezos, if you want to spend your life supporting others through your taxes, giving and giving, you go ahead and give me back my teleporter. But if you know what you deserve, you'll pull that trigger. You know what? And that's four in a row. Pay up. I Pay can't up. believe this is working. Bill Gates didn't even let me finish explaining what it was. I know. I know. It's I know. true. He didn't. Okay. <laughs> you guys want to do Musk now? Let's do Musk now. I said we are saving him for last. I want to do him now. We know you do, buddy. We know. We Please. all do, man. We all do. Now. <laughs> careful. Dude, we are being careful. Yeah. Hey, guys. Oh, damn. What happened to you, Heath? Oh, yeah. Hey, Noah. So I was running at the gym, you know, my, my usual gym run gym. that I do. You saw a pretty girl walk into Planet it's, it's okay. not. Right. It's not the point. So I'm running like I normally do because I, I like fitness and my headphone falls out. So I try to bend down to pick it up without breaking stride. And yeah, well, I got my arm stuck in my butt. Mm, right. Because of the treadmill. Because of the treadmill. Yep, exactly. Well, well, Heath. Why don't you just try a pair of Raycon wireless earbuds? What are Raycon wireless really, earbuds? Really, Cecil? Now? You can do that right now? Sorry, I just I just want to be Thomas this year. Okay. No, it's, that's fair. I get it. Raycon wireless earbuds are the best way to bring audio with you because no matter how much you shake things up, literally no matter how much you shake, you know they won't fall out of your ears. Okay, but what if I'm at the next treadmill over and I want to hear the high-pitched squealing of a man with an it's arm not, up his butt? I, I was not squealing. I, was, I had requested assistance... Very urgently, I feel like you're saying it's squealing. So there's also a an awareness mode for when you need to listen to your surroundings so you can take Raycons with you wherever you go. I wear my headphones when I walk, when I do stuff around the house, even when I'm juggling, and they always stay put. How's the battery life, though? Raycons offer eight hours of playtime and a 32-hour battery life, and they're priced just right. You get quality audio at half the price of other premium audio brands. All right, you know what? I'm in. Where can I get a pair? Right now, God Awful Movies listeners can get 15% off their Raycon orders at buyraycon.com slash gam. That's buyraycon.com slash gam to save 15% on Raycons. Buyraycon.com slash gam. All right, let's get you to the hospital. Yeah. Ooh, let's go to St. Bart's. They're way cooler about when we get stuff stuck up our products. It's true. They are way cooler about that. You guys' ads are weird. This is real. Yeah. yeah. Very. It's funny because it's true. And we're back for the breakdown, and we're going to open up at the 20th Century Motor Company on, I guess, Thursday, this Thursday. The title screen says <laughs> Day After Tomorrow. <laughs> it's Day so After dumb. Tomorrow. This is a flashback. Yeah. Right. So they're flashing back to the Day After Tomorrow? From later. The movie's already really confused. Yeah. So, it's, But we start this whole movie off on the meeting where John Galt's company decided to be a communist company. And he walked out. Yeah. And it's, look, it was bad when they described it to us in the last movie, but actually acting out the guy saying, and obviously those who need more will be paid more, and him being like, over my <laughs> dead body. <laughs> Well, as does his stupid little line about, I will stop the motor of the world. <laughs> yeah, that's not, by the way, how employee ownership works. Employee ownership's awesome. I know. And it just means everybody makes more on average and fucking boss makes less. That's all it means, idiots. And also, they don't know how to businesses work, right? So like if I design something for a business, it's not like I'm just, I could just say, well, I just designed that. I get to take literally all my parts that I used while I was no, here right. and all the time and yep. just walk out the door with it. Nope. No, I designed it while <laughs> right. I was there. It's got to stay here. You, you paid, paid me, me to, to design yes. it while I was here. Right. I wanted everybody to know that and be like, oh, he's leaving. Cool. So we Where get all in the stuff. Right. So to do free the energy for everybody. Right. And it's low cost. Now make more money when we do this employee ESOP thing. <laughs> yes, exactly. Great. And of course, this is John Galt. So the audience, as he walks out, goes, has to go like, who was that? Who is this masked man without a mask? And right? So who is he? He's working at a flower factory. We just watch him scooping heaps into his pants. This is my, I made it. <laughs> this one's, I get to take all the cereal I made. And I kept looking at John Galt. This is his first reveal, right? Mm -hmm. So this is the reveal yeah. of who John Galt is in these movies. We haven't seen his face 
for like whatever, 25 hours we watched the other two, mm-hmm. whatever, however yep. long that was. <laughs> we haven't seen his actual face. He's been covered in shadow the whole time. This is the first time we've seen his face. Clearly a new actor, right? Because they've chose different actors each time because it's hidden in shadow. It doesn't matter. Yeah. This guy looks like he could easily be the singer in a praise band in any of the other movies yep. the guy was watching. Mm-hmm. 100% could yep. be the singer in a praise band. Oh, absolutely. He's also directly coming from a shampoo commercial in 1990. For <laughs> sure. Sure is. Yes. That's what he just did. Like a Pert Plus commercial. Yeah. His, his hair is great, and I doubt he had any fuss, to be fair. But, like, still. <laughs> yeah, sure. <laughs> I hate him. You ever see those things that are like, here's celebrities with their stuntmen. He looks like a stuntman for Jim Caviezel. Okay. Right? Like you're like, oh, but if you were a little more handsome, you could have been Jim Caviezel, but you're not. So hey, get in the car while we roll it. He played this. This actor played a handsome man in Wonder Woman 84. Damn it. He sure did. <laughs> So, and then, of course, we were introduced to this shit narrator that cuts in to, like, kind of catch us up on the movie. You know, society's gone to hell, and now we use trains, basically. Yeah. Yeah, it's basically the world collapsed because one guy didn't give two-week notice. Yeah, right, That's yes. exactly. The whole world's in the <laughs> shitter now because John Galt just walked off his job. And I love the source material that they're stuck with here because, like, in 1957, you could sell, and now America's factories were all shutting down. It's apocalyptic, but that doesn't work in 2014, right? Because you'd be like, <laughs> well, yeah, they're already... What are you? T- we're a service economy, really. Right. It's more of a data economy now. <laughs> Either way, now or in 1957, boat transportation wouldn't stop working because one guy <laughs> left his job at a motor company. <laughs> and also, literally, the reason the boat transportation is a problem in their universe is a goddamn pirate yes. that they created, not socialism. It's so dumb. Right after this, they're like, and there's, it's a pirate. Actually. Also, Cecil, pirate. Pirate, promise you, there will be a yeah, pirate. Here's, a, here's our pirate who doesn't take anything. He just wounds ships and then leaves. Apparently. <laughs> and he like vaporizes, runs alongside him really Vaporizes quick. all the copper that he takes. And, yes, yeah, exactly. He, he like goes slowly across and keys the side of it and then he just drives away. <laughs> Catch and release. Yeah. yeah. Catch and release pirates. Waiting in the middle of the ocean dressed as an iceberg. Yeah. He's, <laughs> <laughs> he's putting sugar in their gas tank and jumping overboard real quick <laughs> and running off. And of course, the narrator's telling us, you know, and as the world was falling apart, we all looked back and thought, hey, you think it was that guy who had his like Jerry Maguire freak out on, on his way out of the 20th century motor company. You think it's his fault that everything in the world has turned to shit? And we were, and everybody was like, well, that's stupid. Why the fuck would it be that? What a dumb thing to think. I worked at a Quiznos in high school and a guy quit halfway through the training because he wasn't allowed to call it the black anus sandwich. And every time there's a terrorist attack in Zimbabwe, I wonder if it was... <laughs> Black Angus. Because <laughs> Angus. Yeah. And to, to be clear, with the exception of introducing us to Dagny, James, and Danconia, the three minutes and 30 second intro to this movie has told us literally everything that happened in the first two films. You're absolutely right. Yeah, we didn't have to do that. Why did we do it? Why did we watch all that? Yeah. <laughs> no, I'm, I really want to know. Like, I'm also, sure <laughs> how we Seriously, am I being this? detained? I would like yeah. to. <laughs> Got to put you into the deprivation chamber we put Todd and Kara Santa Maria in every couple of weeks. I love to this. There's this great moment where they have to like sort of introduce us to the new versions of the actors from the last two movies. Ah, yeah, right, where they're very rough. quickly like, remember this guy? Huh? This is Ellis Wyatt. Fuck you. This is Ellis Wyatt. <laughs> yes, he is. And we see him. He has a diploma from Wyatt Oil yes, on his yeah, wall. Yeah, he gave himself a diploma. He gave himself a diploma <laughs> in oil have, having. What's crazy, it's an honorary degree, too. It's weird. It's very weird. <laughs> Wait, so you didn't even do the, co- the coursework work. Work at just- <laughs> Wyatt Oil University? It's not even like a real certificate. Like, you yeah. just gave it to yourself. It's crazy. Yeah, my professor was a real <laughs> asshole. Glances over at a picture of himself. Yeah. <laughs> And then, of course, all right, so then we get the plane crash from the end and beginning of the last movie. I'm thinking to myself, holy shit, this exact same plane crash has been the beginning or end of half of these three movies. Yeah. Right? Yeah. They paid literally dozens of dollars for this footage. They're getting their use out of it. 
Yeah, and so uh, this is also where we learned that apparently poor man Samantha Mathis is a thing. I didn't, <laughs> never would have guessed. I wrote, my God, that, that plane crash did terrible things to her face. <laughs> yeah, Samantha Mathis, I was like, oh, she was in that shitty movie Broken Arrow. This one, right. I was like, I don't know. I've, I've I, never I genuinely seen don't know. any of the slash. You're in this, this and probably nothing ever again since yeah, 2014, right. like <laughs> many of the people who worked on these movies. Yeah, so John Galt comes to get her like at the end of the last one and, and she's like, what happened? And he's like, well, you see that really bad CGI above us? That's like a Wakandan force field thing. We're not going to be super clear on it, but... We uh, we stole that from the footage of the Scarlet Witch, so if you could not <laughs> yes. tell anybody... <laughs> <laughs> I love, too, that at this point, she literally just got into a plane crash. Her face is bloody. She's lying on her back. And John Galt just walks up, folds her in half, and carries her to yeah. the car. <laughs> like, right. you don't move people. What is wrong with you? You don't just pick them up and shake them. Like, what the fuck? He's like, don't move. You could be seriously injured. I'll move you instead. <laughs> what? <laughs> Sorry, what? are you a doctor? No, I'm just check nope. I'm checking I'm your uh, arm. Your arm's good. I'm picking you up. Engineer. <laughs> so. really wanted him to pick her up and she's like been impaled on a thing it comes loose she just starts pouring blood up oh fuck oh, I wish, I wish we it. why didn't we think of ambulances we're all geniuses medical do you have a good so, HMO damn. because this is uh, <laughs> you're gonna have to pay for all <laughs> of this out of pocket it's mostly out of it's pocket all, here mostly out of pocket Galtz, here, yeah. Galtz Gulch yeah. And I love, too, that, like, as he's, like, folding her in half and, like, dragging her to the car, and then he throws her in the back seat, this other guy who's standing there, and this is Mulligan, this is Midas Mulligan, turns mm -hmm. to him and is like, hey, why don't you guys come over for dinner tonight? I'm like, she's fucking <laughs> injured, man. Like, don't make dinner plans. I don't care how good your gazpacho is, bro. What the fuck? So really? A Holocaust reference, Cecil? <laughs> <laughs> Offensive. So Anti-Semitic. <laughs> uh, I sympathize very strongly with Midas Mulligan here, right? Where you're talking to a friend, you're about to make evening plans, and then they get like a call that grandma died, and you're like, right, but okay, but I I've already need to know right? how much chili to make. <laughs> right? like, oh my gosh, what a terrible loss for you. Uh, but, like, so, but still, so, but yeah, we just need to know how much what? to buy. Yeah. <laughs> so he takes her to his house in the valley, John Galt does. My music note here is store brand Cinderella is about to clean a cottage. <laughs> <laughs> also, gnomes are making sandwiches. I'm pretty right, sure. Right? Yes, yeah. exactly. Music it's is quite certain that both those things are happening. Sandwich music. Yeah, I guess as long as they don't reuse that music later during a sex scene, <laughs> it'll be fine. Oh, I enjoyed that. <laughs> Who doesn't want gnomes making sandwiches while you're fucking? Look, we have to. We only get so much royalty-free music for this. Budget. Come on. So it's just that, that uh, they, the they have, and it's so funny because they have John Galt carrying her everywhere because it's, I guess it's romantic or manly or whatever. <laughs> but he's just like, he's carrying her way too much and too often. He's just yeah. like, oh, let me carry you from this chair over to this one. I think you get more light on this <laughs> like one. She needed like an easy to carry handle at a certain point. <laughs> Like, you know, like, yes, right, right. Like one of those new tubs of detergent or whatever. Right, yeah, <laughs> those things at Costco they give you that's just like a piece of tape that you can grab. Yeah. Just puts that on either side just of her. Just put it on her shoulder blades and drags you her around what? the house. I'm going to charge you for this, by the way, yeah. Yeah. So <laughs> I also, this is always wonderful when someone has to draw the, like, utopia, but they fucking suck. So we realize now that they've left the world of, you know, the Ritz Carlton and luxury because these are all millionaires to live in the third nicest cabins at Bear Mountain. Yes. They own Virginia. <laughs> right. It absolutely is. Oh, and then, so he gets into but the world's greatest, I'm assuming, number one neurosurgeon in the world is there. He's their doctor. And he's got a magical tricorder device that they also he have. They just, <laughs> in case there wasn't enough magical technology in this story for you yet. Well, he, he would have invented it before. Ah, yes. 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 He would have invented would have. it before in the real universe. This amazing device that can diagnose literally anything by waving it next to you. But yes. th there was a, a little bit of red tape. Right, you couldn't do it. So, you know, go fuck yourself. Jesus, they have too many regulations about human medical test subjects, said Ayn Rand 12 <laughs> years after the Holocaust. Yep. <laughs> Yikes, that is correct on the timeline. What yikes. the fuck? That extra, that's an extra yikes. I also, he's a neurologist, so I really wanted him to walk in and for them to be like, well, doctor, what's wrong with her? And for him to be like, 
I have no idea. I'm Fuck. a neurologist. I'm a neurosurgeon. Who knows? He's a neurosurgeon, not yeah. even a neurologist. I can cut your axon, but I, that's just a guess. <laughs> it feels like more you're broken on your arm, and that's, you know, more of an orthopedic thing. Yeah. Like, oh, Is it like an owie? Is it an owie? <laughs> cool. He's working on her, and he gets a call. He's like, yeah, I'll come over and check out your horse after I'm done. I'm like, yeah, the only right. doctor. <laughs> what? Like, that's, I'm the only guy here. <laughs> It's a good thing I have this magical x-ray machine. Because otherwise I'd be fucked, right? If you guys had to... Jesus Christ. Yeah, but she's fine. It was a very light plane crash. It was a plane crash. She just <laughs> fell from the sky in an aeroplane. But no, she's fine. She's got a bit of a bit of a busted ankle. And a nosebleed that they won't wipe off. Why would they? It took... Yeah. Yeah. It took 25 minutes of the movie yes. to wipe off this giant clog. Clo it was so gross. Just wipe it off. What are you doing? It's, it's a little nosebleed. No, they drove all the way home. Yeah. Then they had a conversation. Yep. And then they hung out for a while. And then finally, in between scenes, it gets wiped off. Yeah. Uh -huh. I needed somebody to just reach over and be like, this is gross. I'm wiping it. Lick their finger like your mom. Yeah, and right. just wipe it off. <laughs> <laughs> and then... And then they argue and discuss who's going to fucking pay this neurosurgeon for his time because Paradise has medical debt. <laughs> yep. Oh, Jesus Also, we, we only take gold. <laughs> she actually we said We only that. take gold to blue. <laughs> She's like, I will pay out of pocket for this. I do not accept the, you know, averaging out of medical risk across a large population. That is socialist. <laughs> no, it's not. No, it's not. No, it You're is. so dumb. <laughs> I really wanted them to accidentally walk into health insurance. It's like, oh, well, obviously I don't have any gold yet. It's it's fine. I'll, I'll pay for you now. And like then, pool you know, if we all chipped in oh, like shit, one fuck, gold fuck, piece fuck, of God damn it, we invented, invented universal health care again. <laughs> Just pay me a small amount of gold each month and we'll make sure we reimburse your bills. I forget. We're supposed to let you die and then do a big study and blame preschool, right? Yeah, That's what uh, we're supposed to do. Rap music. Two. <laughs> so and then he puts her in this room to like recover or whatever and she says to him she's like am I your guest or your prisoner and he goes well that choice is yours and I'm like no that's then prisoner <laughs> right if that's, <laughs> that's true if man. I have to just say it's the answer is prisoner then creepier she says why should I trust you and he <laughs> quietly looks at her and doesn't say okay, anything and then bye. slowly <laughs> shuts the door. <laughs> if that ever happens to you, audience, trust me, it's you will be putting lotion on your body from the bottom of a well in half is. an hour. Correct, Cecil. Guaranteed. Or you'll get the hose. Yeah, so Why did I trust you? And then you close the door like Lucille Bluth with one eye still showing? <laughs> get the fuck out of here. Oh, Jesus. Okay, on the plus side, if that ever happens to you, you just met Heath Enright, so well, that's yeah, fun. Go, so right? <laughs> He's from the podcast you like. <laughs> so meanwhile, the high school biology video guy trying to inject drama into photosynthesis narrator chimes in again. Oh, God. To explain that the poverty apocalypse is still going full swing outside of the movie. Mm -hmm. Right. Oh, they bring up Ragnar, the pirate, pirate again. More pirate stuff. So, okay. So there's this cargo ship that tipped over, right? It's over <laughs> by where I live. It's, it's next to Brunswick, Georgia. They bought some fucking footage of that. And God damn it, they are going to get a lot of use out of <laughs> yeah, that tipped over <laughs> cargo ship. <laughs> they're going to use stills. They're going to use video. Mm -hmm. They're going to use it all, man. You know what socialists do? They put everything on the left of the ship. Typical. <laughs> what the fuck are you talking about? Why would that have anything to do with any of this? <laughs> It looks like Ragnar slid its tires on one side. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like well, that's what by. happens when you key it. So you yeah, exactly. key just the one side. You keyed it on the right side. The other side flips yeah, over because that exactly. one's lighter now. Just working around it in a circle with a can opener on a little thingy. <laughs> <laughs> just go around it enough in circles, it'll start spinning and it'll just sink right down. <laughs> so yeah, so then fucking Dagny goes to a house party. That's a scene in the movie. This how funny is the fucking, this is the millionaire paradise and they have yep. paper bag lanterns. <laughs> yeah, they do. So, they do, so, yeah. To be clear, like the greatest paper bag lantern guy in the world <laughs> they do, yeah. is yes, in they this went stupid fucking valley. Absolutely. Who's building these houses? For, uh, yeah. Okay, all right. He founded Yankee Candle. That's <laughs> right. He's a hero. There's also 
a bartender at this party. Yep. Which means John Galt was like, I like the, the way The world's you mull, greatest sir. bartender. Yeah. <laughs> Right. So and 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 everybody has to like take turns going up to her and explaining why they came to Millionaires Gulch Libertaristan or whatever. <laughs> Midas says he left because the government was forcing him to be a bad banker. And the neurosurgeon said they that he left because the government was forcing him to be a bad doctor. And on and on. Yeah. He wanted laissez faire medicine. Just yes! I want to re yes! revisit that concept. Yeah. He, he did. didn't like regulations about medicine. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Doctors should be able to do whatever they want and call it medicine. This movie. Yeah. This movie and your aunt on Facebook. This <laughs> political yeah. party. Yes. Not yeah. do your own research. Do your own surgery. Just fucking make it up. Are you crazy? Right. I love, too, that Midas' explanation is that, you know, I, I loan money to people who could only pay it back. And people were very mad at me. And I'm like, dude, did you even pay attention to the housing crisis? They were fucking shooting money out of a fucking T-shirt gun to anybody <laughs> who wanted. Are you kidding me? And then they trundle it all into right. fucking low-risk stocks. And they fucking ruined everything. What the fuck? Because there wasn't enough regulation. Yes. Jesus because they literally Christ. had Nina loans where you like could just fucking be like, is he alive? Maybe. Okay, I'll take the money. Yeah, it's fucking ridiculous. Yeah, this is Midas Mulligan, president of Bear Stearns. That's yeah, absolutely right. what's happening Fuck here. Fuck this guy. God. Exactly. But meanwhile, so John Gold is just giving Danny the hard sell on being a selfish piece of shit and living with them in selfish piece of shit land. And she's like, well, what about all the stuff that you left behind? And they're like, we didn't leave anything behind. I'm like, you set fire to the oil wells and <laughs> blew up the mines, you fucking assholes. Yes, you did. Literally everything that's not in this cabin, you left behind. Yeah. <laughs> well, and, and and they're like, no, see, we, we went on strike. And I'm like, no, this is this is a tantrum. Strikes have demands and shit. You said yourself that you have no demands. Yes. Yeah, this whole movie is about the fact that you want nothing. Right. Yeah. <laughs> There's no ransom without a hostage. That's right? not how yes. it works. <laughs> I'm holding myself hostage. To me, with my greatest asset, my mind. <laughs> well, and then you're like, and you're thinking to yourself, th th they can't possibly be this blatantly assholish, can they? And then they're like, you know what else sucks is charity. <laughs> <You know? laughs> yep. This scene was crazy. I expected Bizarro Superman to wander through and be like, me uncomfortable, <laughs> this weird. <laughs> <laughs> It's it's this giant dinner party and everybody's like, we each have a, a medium-sized libertarian speech for you, Dagny. One by one, we've lined up. I, John Galt, will be first. Midas is next. Uh, you just, everybody, shh. Reverse and everybody's the party stops talking to listen to them each give a little shitty yep. speech to Dagny. <laughs> Which, to be fair, like, a libertarian paradise is definitely mansplaining in turn <laughs> to the only pretty woman in your secret valley. Oh, man. I just want to talk about charity for a second, though. This is the thing that I, just makes me crazy whenever you hear this comment where people are like, well, what about charity? I'm a libertarian, but I think, you know, if you want to give to charity, great, but you know, you shouldn't be forced to give to charity. And, and the one thing I want to say is like, if charity was going to work, it could have fixed everything already. It right? would it have worked. fixed it yesterday. It had every <laughs> fucking opportunity to work and it hasn't fucking worked yet, <laughs> asshole, because nobody gives enough to fix everything. Yep. Even in their crazy, shitty fantasy movie, right, where they get to make all the rules. We have now had four sci-fi inventions they were like oh so you all give to charity no we yeah, hide no. in the valley and don't give it to anybody <laughs> including you a person who we want to live here even we couldn't be bothered to give you charity right. for a second yes for a second we were like you wash dishes for your fucking <laughs> medical care yeah. so, but they all give each other charity constantly because you have to because it's right. impossible not to. it would be yes so, and also, okay, we have to address the fact that Ellis Wyatt, the new actor that plays Ellis Wyatt, the oil man that set shit on fire in the first movie, is dressed like Eli was putting together a costume for his live show in Houston. 100%. Yep. 100%. <laughs> mm -hmm. This ridiculous cowboy at a dinner theater outfit that he's got going. Like, we're supposed to take this seriously the entire fucking time. Yeah. <laughs> it's like Eli in Roadhouse instead of Sam Elliott. Yeah. <laughs> the best. Have you ever gone to a historical place that isn't one of the famous ones like Gettysburg? 
but they have a historical reenactment. It's like, well, yeah. here in Bayonne, New Jersey, <laughs> you might know a thing or two about the four-legged stool. But <laughs> this is the actor who dies of heroin <laughs> the first. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> But and then Dagny is like, but isn't this philosophy terrible and won't a lot of people die because of it? And they're like, yeah, but not you. You're better than everybody else, too. <laughs> so it won't matter to you. We left because we're not we're CEOs and we're not getting the recognition we deserve. That's all I'm saying. <laughs> OK, seriously, though, that's what happened. That's what happened. They all say, well done, Dagny. <laughs> they do. Because. Nobody said that to them, so they quit the world. Yep. And then they all take turns patting her on the back one by one. Yeah, and then themselves, yeah. Dutch Rudder. We're doing Dutch Rudder? <laughs> <laughs> no, Circle Jerk is charity. We're not doing it. <laughs> really? it's, 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 it's cooperative. Oh, yeah, I yep, heard it. Yep, I heard yep, it. yep, there you go. We have a commune. So then the narrator cuts in to tell us that there's a steel shortage and Ragnar has taken more copper. A terrible pirate. Right. <laughs> and like the, the narrator at this point might as well be going like, and then on page 569, um, uh, Ragnar the pirate. Um, <laughs> Getting stared at by a panel on Dr. Phil. Dude, you're not helping. Anyway. <laughs> also, just to be clear, how is this pirate? This It's one guy named Ragnar Daniskel. He's stealing all the copper in the world apparently does he have a navy of all like how big do they think the water part what is if you just put of the world? half the copper in one ship and half in another <laughs> have you guys thought of he's <laughs> fucked he just has a can opener it takes him forever you could just have the, one ship would just go around while he was doing he, it the one ayn rand would write something to make him allow to be in like two spaces at one time she right would write he that in the, where he, he could like device. split himself in half one or something oh pirate. he invented a quantum yeah right quantum. Yep. Yep. yeah there you go Done. So, okay, so then we cut back to the valley where John Galt is asking Dagny to stay with them for one month to decide if she wants to live there. But first rule, you can't give anyone a gift of any kind ever, so she'll have to earn money for that month. <laughs> Just to be clear, they have a rule in their valley of freedom. They have more than one rule, actually. Oh, yes. Yeah, very, very, yeah. <laughs> a lot of rules. <laughs> but, okay, but... This played like she, he was going to ask her for head, though, right? He's like, of course, you'll have to earn your No game. question. <laughs> yeah. I cannot believe that this book wasn't yeah. written by a man. Right? Like, the, at this point, if I had been reading this book and Ayn Rand was in the room, I would be like, I would be doing the, like, 80s comedy, tear open the dress to reveal a penis because yes. it's impossible this wasn't written by a man. What threw me off is he had a pizza box in his lap the whole time. And I was like, come <laughs> yeah, on, know. come on, man. You're going to open the pizza <laughs> box, right? I have a question. It's a tiny moment. Why does she boop his nipple at the end I, of the I, scene? It's a button. It's a button. She fixes a button for him. I've wondered this for so goddamn long. I that okay. it makes she no, boops his nipple. She boops his little button thing. It's it makes, yeah. She reaches over and touches a loose button. Okay, Cecil okay. just Cecil's explanation sounds much it. more accurate to me. Let me say what happened in my head. In my head, he was like, "And of course, we all learn everything, and we must earn our pay." Boop. And she just reaches over and gives him like a little nipple flick, just like a. More of that where that came from. Buddy. <laughs> <laughs> but she agrees to be his maid. Yes. Right? She's like, I'll be your maid for a month. And he's like, sure, why the fuck not? Boot my nipple and let's get going. <laughs> <laughs> so but anyway, so speaking of which, they end up at this li this fucking libertarian market. We're about to meet Ragnar the goddamn pirate. Oh my god, this is the best. It's just they meet, they see this. <laughs> they see the world's greatest pirate. And he's like, I'm the world's greatest pirate. It's just looking. Checking the butternut squash Somet <laughs> at this farmer's market. Sometimes they sell fresh cilantro in this aisle. So. <laughs> Sometimes even pirates need butternut just, squash. I was just scratching time. the bottom of the cantaloupes and smelling them. Leave me alone. <laughs> so I guess uh, I guess pirating doesn't involve a lot of sit-ups. Uh, no, 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 it doesn't. Yar. Looks like maybe it used to, like 30 years ago. Did you do yeah, a yeah, yeah, as a pirate yeah, like 30 yeah, years ago? Mm -hmm. Have day, you guys bro. been to a lot of farmer's markets? Like, have you been never to, been to any? a farmer's market? So Never. many fucking farmer's markets. So many markets, for you. Cecil? Heath, you a farmer market guy? I'm a, yeah, I know. Okay, a, a you've been to market. it. Okay, can you tell me, is this, like, because he's only recruiting the best in the world. Does this look like the best farmer's market in the world? Did he go no, out? it looks it like sure a piece of shit farmer's market. And Craig was like, four carts, man. No, there's like yeah. one type of pepper, one type of apple. Go fuck 
yourself. <laughs> this is supposed to be like a paradise of libertarian thought. Think of a second pepper, assholes. <laughs> think of a supermarket. <laughs> think of a fucking somebody. Think of Jesus Christ. <laughs> fucking idiots. It looks like a Russian supermarket, which is like, com it looks like the opposite of their, their philosophy. Whatever. <laughs> It looks like someone asked the libertarian to dress a set with fresh vegetables that are expensive. Yeah. It's just like, come here, you, you can space yeah. those apples exactly. out, Jim. Dude, I have nine. I have nine apples. I can't space them out. We're going to put them on the craft cart later. So just yeah, put so the whole peppers just, right there on would, a platter and we're going to eat those. So, <laughs> And this is, of course, where we learned that Ragnar the pirate is reverse Robin Hood. He's reverse God. Robin Hood. He steals the things that have been seized for the good of the the many and gives them back to the billionaires. Right. And he's very, very, and what's what's great is these governments make that really convenient. They put all that on one ship. It is nice of them yeah. Yeah, to separate <laughs> out the seized They just put stuff. all that on one ship and then they label it very nice so he can find it in the water. Why do we call the ship the SS Looter? We should yeah. maybe just... <laughs> That maybe is a mistake. Really wanted a flash cut of him bringing a barrel of raw oil to someone's door. There you go. I told you I wouldn't let him steal it from you. <laughs> here's your, here's your 60 you. tons of copper ore. I got in the <laughs> truck over here. So, and then of course the, the, we have the, the woman there that is, she just kind of leans into the scene and says, I joined this billionaire secret society because I wanted to homeschool my kids. And we're like, that's yeah, fine. <laughs> No, that's, fine. that's fine, lady. She's yeah. the greatest Christian movie character in the world? What is she? <laughs> okay, question. What do children provide the... Va do these children have jobs? Oh, shit. I feel like there might well, be a baby size. They're moochers is what they are. Yeah. <laughs> they should be murdered. So maybe there's a burgeoning film business there. Who knows? Yeah, right. <laughs> Cut out those kids like a cancer, right? <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Read an ethics. And then the narrator butts in like a kid trying to tell you a joke. To tell us that the fucking Taggart Bridge just turned a hundred, right? And and he says it's America's most important railway bridge. I'm like, what is with the ridiculous superlatives in this movie? What is America's most important rail bridge? You guys have any idea? Why there's not a, that's not a fucking thing. Who was the wild card seed in that bracket? I remember it was a weird yeah seed. <laughs> Definitely weird. But anyway, so that narration resolves into a high-level board of colluders meeting. This includes Mr. Thompson, the head of the state, as though president was like, couldn't they couldn't get the rights to the term president. Were they not allowed to say president? They don't, don't say know. the word president once. No, they say head of state, yeah, yeah. Yep, they always say head of state. Was this like anti-Obama? Were they trying to like make some sort of like dig at him? I, I, I have no fucking idea. So, so they're having their little meeting where they're like bwaha ha about, you know, helping the less fortunate. And they also, they're like, oh, and you know what will be interesting later? There will be a reveal regarding Project F. I can't say no more in Act 1. Jesus Christ. No more. I can say no more. <laughs> Look, it's not the most disappointing revelation in the movie yes, because we just close. saw it's an close. overweight middle-aged pirate. Squeezing the pear. Well, because it was right. Yeah, right. Only because Ragnar was also <laughs> the, there. The pirate's my heart, though. The pirate yeah. hits my heart. Well, I don't know, man. But maybe the most disappointing reveal is the one that comes immediately after that. This is where we meet Cuffy. So Cuffy Megs is the is the head of the railroad unification program, the evil government institute that's going to nationalize the railroads. You know, God forbid we could end up as communist as Japan. <laughs> and then we all paused and thought about Cuffy Miggs for quite a while. But anyway, so we did. I feel like didn't it seem like they said his name in the scene like nine more times than way they more than it was they, necessary? Yeah, everybody was just like, "So Cuffy Miggs is right here." Cuffy Miggs. Uh, why don't we all say your name out loud around the table? <laughs> Cuffy Miggs. I get it because we all have that friend who's got a terrible name, and you have to say it a bunch of times while making hard eye contact with everyone else else so they don't accidentally make a joke about it. Sorry, you said Elf by accident and I literally met somebody named Elf recently and I was warned. I was like, you're going to meet somebody named Elf soon? And I was yeah. like, okay, yeah, I'm not okay. going to laugh. Right, yeah. And it was yeah. like, this is my husband yeah. named Elf and I was like, <laughs> yeah, hello. <laughs> <laughs> no, my so wife has a friend named Basil and the first time I met them for like 20 minutes, my wife's like, Basil always goes to the store. Don't you, Basil, while making hard eye Basil contact. So I knew not to be like, is her husband named Cilantro? They were just doing that for coffee. I get Isn't it. it. Just like a Greek it. name, though. 
<laughs> I like that Anna is fucking with you. <laughs> so, okay. So that night at the valley, John Galt is giving Dagny a, a bootstrap speech about her grandpa and his gumption when he started that railroad back in 1907 or whatever. And she's like, oh, everybody has uh, fun uh, libertarian speeches thread. These, I love these. This is so, so I love many it in of this valley. Them. This is great. I'm going to stay here. Yeah, yeah for sure. <laughs> Yeah, he's like, you should join our asshole club. And she's like, but I love my railroad. And he's like, you see, that's weird, though, right? You you get it. It's weird. Okay, see, <laughs> this is where the movie started to come together for me because I have not understood Dagny's motivation throughout these three movies, but it really came together here where I realized she's literally in love with railroads. <laughs> okay. All right. Yes. Yes. That makes sense. Makes a now. lot of the movies make sense. Yeah, it makes a lot it. of soundtracks <laughs> make sense at least. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah, but so then John Galt is going to take her to the to the power plant that runs the entire valley. And and they're coming up. He's like, This is my magic engine, you know, for two movies we've been building this up. She's like, Cool, I bet we'll see it, huh? And he's like, No, no, we yeah. won't. No, mm -hmm. no. And on their way, he's like, Now this engine by itself could power the entire West Coast, but Fuck the entire West Coast. Fuck the West Coast up his ass. But it doesn't because I'm the worst. What? Yes. <laughs> I'm in a snit. Uh, say the credo out loud with me. These are my crayons. Ready? <laughs> One, two, three. Yeah, These to get are... into the fucking power plant, they have like their their speak friend and enter. Except for instead of friend, <laughs> it's, it's like I will never be charitable and fuck all the moochers who want my tax money. Right? That's their whole like creed. Mm -hmm. It is so stupid. The door can't open unless you say those dumb words. Yes. Yeah. Oh my god! <laughs> I solemnly swear that I'm really up to no good. Like yeah. genuinely no good. None. <laughs> Jesus. Okay. Also, just to be clear about the economy of this place, he provides unlimited power to the doctor and the fruit stand guy <laughs> equally. Is that what's happening? <laughs> and then they pay him in gold. Yes, in because gold. Because he didn't want paper money and, for and that. And they, they literally have to <laughs> hand each other piles of gold every day. Yeah, it's a very difficult system. They spend most of their day moving gold across the It would the be house. really useful to have paper money, really. You know who's making the most money? The fanny pack salesman yeah, in the valley right? is fucking crushing it. <laughs> Jesus. <laughs> so, but she's not ready to say the asshole creed yet, so she can't go in and see the engine. And the movie's like, the movie's like, that's why we're not showing it to you, by the way, is because she's not ready to say it. it's totally in there. There's a bit badass looking engine in there. We just can't show it to you. It's in this port of John. If they yeah. open the door, yes, it's in there, exactly. I swear. <laughs> <laughs> and then we get this little montage of her and John Gold, I guess falling in love. Right? I didn't know what it was a montage of until they showed her laughing at the end. And I'm like, oh, falling in love. OK, well, it's very confusing because it's like, oh, this is uh, they're they're shaking hands with construction guys. OK, they're waxing a canoe. Is this romantic? Are they romantically waxing a canoe <laughs> and shaking hands? <laughs> With construction guys? And yes, it is because this is commerce and that's sexy. Oh, God, you're th right. This group. Th that's that's what they're doing. Yeah. Yes. They have dinner and at the meal, there's an ice sculpture that I believe is of them fucking. <laughs> and I just want to say that's a bold fucking move. <laughs> yeah. Also, they have an ice sculpture well, guy the best in the valley. Ice sculpture the best, the guy greatest in one. the Very world. Best. The greatest <laughs> us two fucking ice sculpture guy in the world. <laughs> How many ice sculptures is equal to one cold fusion machine in terms of the economics here? And how many, like how much business is the guy getting? I feel like everybody's just going and getting ice sculptures they don't really need just to keep him there, you know? Sure. It's like, what the fuck am I even doing here? I don't understand. The concert pianist is selling out. Well, there's two women and zero black people in the valley. It's tricky. <laughs> yeah. The demographics of it all. How much all. is the wax in gold? How much do you have to buy the wax for the canoe in gold? <laughs> How much does that cost? <laughs> all right. Well, I'll tell you what. I feel like Cecil needs a minute to come to terms with the fact that that's all the pirate we're going to get. So we're going to pause I'm for fine. a quick break. Okay. We'll be back in a flash <laughs> with even more Atlas Shrugged. Who is John Galt? It's just disappointing is all. <laughs> this podcast is sponsored by BetterHelp Online Therapy. And then I'm going to be like, 
What do you think, Harvey? And the doctor will be like, oh, okay, this guy needs therapy. Dude, again, it's it's not necessary. Hey, guys, have you seen my colored pencils? Oh, uh, indeed I have, Noah. I put them all up my nose. See? Oh, wh why? Well, I'm trying to get into therapy, but I know that therapy only takes crazy people. So, you know, I'm acting crazy. You felt like you weren't acting crazy enough? That's exactly what I said. Look, Eli, why don't you just try better help? What's better help? We talk about better help a lot on this show, and this month we're discussing some of the stigmas around mental health. Many people think therapy is for so-called crazy people, but therapy doesn't mean something's wrong with you. It means you recognize that all humans have emotions and we need to learn to control them, not avoid them. And we've been taught that mental health shouldn't be part of normal life, but that's wrong too. We take care of our bodies with the gym, the doctor, and nutrition. We should be focusing on our minds just as much. BetterHelp is customized online therapy that offers video, phone, and even live chat sessions with your therapist so you don't have to see anyone on camera if you don't want to. It's much more affordable than in-person therapy, and you can be matched with a therapist in under 48 hours. Give it a try and see why over 2 million people have used BetterHelp online therapy. This podcast is sponsored by BetterHelp, and God Awful Movies listeners get 10% off their first month at BetterHelp.com slash awful. That's B-E-T-T-E-R-H-E-L-P dot com slash awful. All right. Well, I guess I don't need to act so crazy then. All right. Can I have my colored pencils back now then? No, now this is a thing for me. Yeah. Okay. And this, Dagny, is our market. My goodness, John, it's huge. Yes. These people are selling what they want for the price they can get the way it's meant to be. Alfred here sells the best apples you'll ever taste. Don't you, Alfred? I sure do, Mr. Galt. And Christine here makes butter croissants that will knock your socks off. Oh, Mr. Galt, you're too kind. And, and what about these other stalls? Uh, oh, them? Uh, they sell child porn. Oh. You know, it turns out that when people are talking about not wanting regulation and capitalist freedom, they almost always mean child porn. Like, pretty much all the time. I see. Uh, well, I, well, I guess in the name of freedom, it's important that people get to sell child porn. Yep. That is the conclusion our beliefs lead to. Exactly. R oh, right. Right. I'll also sell child porn. Not now, Alfred. W well, I'm just saying. I do. Do you want some? <laughs> I feel like you were leaning. No. <laughs> and we're back for more of this shit. We're going to rejoin the inaction with Francisco Danconio setting up his new mines there in the valley. He's going to mine new copper here. Yeah. So they're just now getting metal in the yep. <laughs> for a while, <laughs> which makes those cabins really fucking impressive. Yeah. Let me tell you. Well, and the gold coins. Yeah, right. Yeah. So. <laughs> All these are the best miners, too. Best right. Miners, yes, the top best miners. smelters. But that's the thing. Mm -hmm. Who came there to be a miner? Right. Who decided to. Yeah. OK. Well, at least I'm not paying into the social safety net. Am I right? As I descend <laughs> to the earth for my seventh shift in a row. God, like minor in a libertarian paradise is the most terrifying possible job. Jesus Christ. And of course, Dagny shows up and she says, well, you know what you really need here is a train. It could go over here and over there. What am I thinking? I'm just I'm already trying to solve your trainlessness problems. I just can't help myself. Right. <laughs> And they're like, well, Dagny, that'd be great. We could even loan you the money to move in. And I'm like, who are you, Tom fucking Nook? You're going to loan me the money to move into the place you want me to move to? Fuck you. Also, John Galt looks more problematic than he already did, which is hard to pull off. He's got <laughs> fucking aviator sunglasses on now. <laughs> and his nipples are all perked up from the booping, maybe, or the button thing, whatever Cecil said. He looks like a spokesmodel for unmarked vans in this. the rest of the movie. <laughs> yeah. It's terrifying. Mm -hmm. And I, I love, too, that they have to, like, tell you that three weeks of her month have gone by now, right? So they have Francisco go, enjoy your last week, Dagny. That montage was three weeks long. Three weeks of montage. <laughs> it was curious. 
I love that her solution to like she she comes up with this mining solution, but the mining solution requires them to like build an entire brand new thing, blast a tunnel, build a trestle, make a it's like way <laughs> like a huge workaround. I'm like, we're already getting shit out of the mine, Dagny. Calm the fuck down. Why don't you just steal copper? You have the yeah. world's <laughs> greatest fucking pirate right there. Yeah. Just have Ride Diddy shotgun Kong. with the world's greatest pirate and steal yourself some <laughs> copper and come back. We're good. Minecart carnage. Yep. <laughs> it's just Diddy Kong. We have, it's, right, he's yeah, the, no, best, he's the best Kong in the world for minecarts. <laughs> I don't know that I'm ready to call Diddy the be, the best Kong. <laughs> no, wow, no, really? When it comes to minecarts, yeah, we're in a fight. <laughs> and then, okay, so then she has to have a chat with Ned Ryerson about libertarianism. <laughs> yeah. Ned, Ned, it's yeah. so did Steve Toblowski is in this. I don't know how they got him. He's a real actor. Yep. Okay. So here's the thing that you need to know about this scene. There is a batshit crazy amount of pollen in the air. I thought it was bugs at first. It's <laughs> pollen. It's they, it's like there's nuclear fallout. They're like next to yeah. Chernobyl up in this shit. It's hilarious. Stephen Toblowski, bless his fucking heart, is trying to give this speech, and obviously there's shit going all up in his nose and his <laughs> mouth the whole it fucking time, and he just powers through it's it. Rough. They're also drinking his very own estate grown Cabernet. He plays yes. philosopher slash diner cook, Mr. Axton. And that's, yes, right. right? Yes. It's yes. hard to keep track of because he's the third actor playing <laughs> that character. So I, I took me a second to remember. Uh -huh. But yes, yep. he in the valley is their wine guy. So he's grown brand new Colorado mountains. Cabernet that they're drinking and it says estate grown which means they're not using grapes from any other like real wineries in wine nope. region. That's bad. Yep. You shouldn't yes. advertise <laughs> that you have estate grown Cabernet from your shitty place that doesn't grow wine. It's so bad that they don't even notice that it's filled with pollen, right? They're just like, yeah, right. fine. <laughs> it's fine. <laughs> it's like a lily pad in the drink at the end of this. <laughs> it's insane. <laughs> People don't know. You can actually make wine from pears. Yeah, you can. <laughs> it's, it's really mm -hmm. sweet. But of course, the whole speech that he's given is about how being greedy is awesome and taxation is theft. And some assholes think humans deserve to survive based only on our <laughs> shared humanity. <laughs> That's, the, so That's the one line. Look, this actor's doing his absolute best, but you can see him sounding it out. He's just like, <laughs> a lot of people think that people have a right to live because they're human beings. No. <laughs> no. I say no. <laughs> so That's it. That's the end of the line. Yep. And then the narrator cuts in to help Ned Ryerson out, right? He comes in and he's like, also, I forgot to mention earlier when we were talking about Thompson, I meant to say that he was going to have a big speech later. It's a big God. speech that he has coming up. <laughs> the, the fucking narrator from Super Friends would tell him to work on his goddamn segment. <laughs> meanwhile. <laughs> he literally says meanwhile in one of these fucking things. He does. <laughs> so, the Duke boys are getting into a real <laughs> bunch of shenanigans. I also, we have to talk about that this narration is also being used to get rid of Henry Reardon, who if we'll remember is the love interest in the first two movies. Mm -hmm. But because Ayn Rand is a horny 12-year-old writing libertarian fan fiction, she was like, but then he met an even hotter guy who was like a man. And then the first guy was like, that's okay. You go make sweet nipple love to him now. Goodbye forever. <laughs> I'm not in the movies no more. Like, yeah, we exactly. never see Hank. It's like they couldn't get the rights to this character or something. right? They're, they're like, they say, well, and Hank kept looking for Dagny and we see an airplane flying back and this forth is... overhead. <laughs> like he's just doing donuts right there. And this is when Ragnar reveals his super X mutant in power of being able to sit on the ground, look up and go, hey, that's Hank Reardon up there. <laughs> he just knows who's in the plane. And then the other guy walks up and he's like, yeah, I know. Like, <laughs> both know that it's Hank Reardon. Right. Well, like, uh, did you check the license plate? What are you talking oh, yeah. about? Yeah, yeah, and he's flying around like a Koopa Troopa. It's probably him. <laughs> he's, you know, he knows the ballpark where Who we are. Koopa Troopa above us like that. He is totally. If you look at him, he stops. It's like the ghost. It's cool. <laughs> I could tell you who, who's in any plane 
And also, I can eat two foot long Subway sandwiches right in a row. <laughs> like most people just eat one, Prove but I can it. have two. <laughs> I can make a, a boat lean to the left so far, it tips over. <laughs> it's so weird. That's just me holding on to it, though. Yeah, <laughs> it's related oh, to the sub sandwiches. <laughs> Punch me in the stomach right now. Oh <laughs> my God. <laughs> <laughs> All right. I vomited. I didn't see. I thought uh, you were going to wait. Is that an unchewed Subway sandwich? <laughs> Are you going to eat that? <laughs> I wanted to call it a black anus on my first day of training. Uh, <laughs> they wouldn't let me. That's why I'm a pirate. That's, that's why I stole all the world's copper. So that night, Dagny is up. She's looking for a snack. John startles her as she's checking the fridge. <laughs> <laughs> terrifying place to stay where the guy's just quietly sitting in the fucking just sitting there all night just sitting there and you come down and you're like oh man let's look maybe let's get some fucking something to eat and you open up and, say, and he's like and he's like there's nothing in there. Oh I'm like, what God. the fuck are you doing? <laughs> Why are you, you sitting in a path? dark room like that, you fucking <laughs> lunatic? I need to put a bell around your neck. That's ridiculous. And then his fucking answer's even creepier because he's like, she's like, what are you doing? He's like, I've been watching you. That's literally his answer. Yes, <laughs> right. And, and then she, and then they both stand there like what, like wondering what this scene is for. They show it, they show us that in a flashback. He's like, I spied on you in a rail tunnel. <laughs> right. I wanted to fuck your shawl. <laughs> and they show us that. Totally and does. she's like, Nice. She yeah. smiles, and that's the end yeah. of the fucking scene. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Yikes. It's like, you ever you ever have a friend who's a lady, and she is with a guy who's gross, and he makes a gross statement, and you can see that that's what she's into, and you all of a sudden have to be like, ah, that's why Monster Energy had is here. He sucks her toes. That's what <laughs> yeah. this whole third movie is. It's just like, I get it. Ayn Rand wanted to be followed down a mining tunnel <laughs> and she had to write an 800 page book about it. It's 1200. <laughs> but Dagny can't stay. Dagny is desperate to save the bridge that she loves. Yes. Very important bridge. Yep. Again, my fan theory making this movie really makes sense. Get on board. Yeah. <laughs> And then she's like, I think I'm going to leave. And John Galt is like, all right, well, there are a couple of conditions on your departure. And I'm like, are there? Really? Yep. You think you can just do that? You have another rule in your valley of freedom. <laughs> I just want to be clear. Yep. Mm -hmm. Promise I won't tell on you. Is that seriously? That's the other. That's another rule in your valley of freedom. Okay. I really wanted her to be like, okay, but if I don't tell on you, isn't that living for someone else? And he's like, oh, shit. Fuck. I just I didn't even pay you not to tell. So okay, so this is the next day. She's leaving the secret valley on their spare airplane. I love this. He's this is so fucking dumb. He's like, I have to blindfold you so you won't know where you are. It's like I flew here though. Yeah. Okay. What like so you can't see the streets we take in the sky? <laughs> on the way? In the How air? do you think air geography works? <laughs> was it just me? Did you guys think he was going to ask her to fly away with a blindfold on? I thought he was going to ask her to fly the plane with a blindfold. On. <laughs> <laughs> and if she does it, she could stay, right? Yeah, it's like right, an right, initiation yeah, exactly. or whatever. Yeah, right. yeah, yeah, there you go. <laughs> so Dagny gets back to New York, which the narrator explains at length the narrate this is where he literally uses the word meanwhile he says meanwhile several reared and steel workers died defending a mill from communists or some dumb shit sponsored union thugs he gets so excited when he says government sponsored union thugs that's right they had jack boots. I don't know yep. what that means, but I'm pretty sure they had jack boots. <laughs> so dumb. It's a bunch of gazpachos. <laughs> that, that, that's a union mill now. Right. That's good. We like society has vibranium now, and that's a union mill. It's all positive. Hooray. That they left. For us. Also, we learned that the the weed ain't moving. So everything is so simplistic. The guns and the butter aren't moving now, right? <laughs> And we also, we have to meet the SSI director. Now, this character, of course, he's been in all three movies, always played by a different actor. And he's the scientist that, you know, declared that Reardon Steel was no good. But he's 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 been feeling bad about that ever since. And he's been slowly coming around to the position that maybe perverting science for the sake of the government isn't a good idea, right? Yeah. So, but he's meeting with evil 
government guy, the I, I never caught this character's name, who's like the front bald guy with the long hair. Oh, yes. Robert Stadler, I think. Okay, sure. Yeah, the one that looks like a Victorian ghost. That's that, the, yes. <laughs> that guy, okay. yes. That guy, yeah. He looks like an extra in the background of a bad guy scene in a Harry Potter movie. Yes, absolutely, <laughs> absolutely. He's like yes. nodding fervently while Voldemort talks. It's like Dobie's <laughs> dad or something. Yeah, yeah, but the regional assistant manager to Voldemort. Yeah, that guy. He's, yeah, Vigo the Carpathian, very much. <laughs> he does. Okay. Very much does, yeah. All right. Add space on his head there. I like that at this point, in the, he gets up from his dinner of what appears to be a single egg, and the the waiters <laughs> yes. like brush him down yes. like a horse. <laughs> yeah, I mean, That's amazing. He's a socialist bureaucrat, so you know he gets so he gets brushed off by a union uh, inefficient union <laughs> brusher team. Yes. And that's really why the trains aren't working because, and that's why oh, we don't have copper. It's like the thing is, you remember you you like you see the videos in like the fifties when you would pull up to a gas station and they'd all run out and start like doing your windows and checking your tires. It's like that. It's so yeah. silly. <laughs> and so he's on a jack at one point. They're spinning him around. <laughs> it's crazy. Mm, stop! Stop! You're just doing the thing on the side of my face. That's nothing. I don't have a like a nut there. It reminded me of like what poor people think happens to rich people. Yeah, like, exactly. That's what Right, that's yes. what I thought it was. Was like like somebody's never <laughs> ever had a like a luxury experience in their I life. I bet this is what they do at the Applebee's, and yeah. they're just like, no, that's what happens in luxury experience. Like that's it. That's yep. whatever I imagine. Whenever Donald Trump is done eating his well done gold covered steak, there's a fancy <laughs> man who comes over with a shoe brush and all right, that <laughs> pushes it all over off. his body. That's like that's like ninety percent chance that that's true though. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> Guy's got a Diet Coke button. What are we talking about? Yeah, right. About? Exactly. But what the apparently what the evil Victorian ghost needs, Vigo the Carpathian, is for the evil the <laughs> scientist guy, SSI guy, to sign off on Project F, which is, looks suspiciously like an instrument of torture. Well, does it look like an instrument it of torture? It looks like so. No. <laughs> How did you know that that no. was an instrument of torture? It's just, that was you're just, just seeing a panel with a chair next to it. That was just the remote control for it, yes, man. Yes, right. Why did That's you know that right away? It's just the user interface. It doesn't say, like, torture up on the side. <laughs> the torturometer 2000. It looks like a video game machine Noah's excited about. It's 100%. That I'm glad that he, right? 100. 100%. <laughs> absolutely. <laughs> Cannot look anything like anything else. <laughs> you know, you know they only made 150 of these. Great, man. Fucking board game from the 80s, man. That's what it looks like. Is that a Magnavox water board? Yeah. I, yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's Gen 1. I love to. They, this is how bad the writers are. The scientist goes, what if I refuse? And the writer doesn't have anything for the other guy to say. Nope. So he just stands there. And then the dude signs it. He like makes a whistling sound with his nose for a minute. And yeah. then he signs. And he's like, all right. Like, well, what if I make a whistling sound? Yeah, that'll be annoying and I'll have to whistle. sign this because fuck. <laughs> blow your nose. Jesus Christ. <laughs> also, it's happening in there. It's just a tiny moment, but he's holding, it's a floppy piece of paper. So when yeah. he goes to sign it, he ends up with this fucking Madison Cawthorn signature. <laughs> Mr. Science. Can you can you bend over? I'll do this on your back. It's it's not. <laughs> yes, I will torture. I love that the horrible autocratic government is just one signature away from shutting down. Yeah. Like if they don't get this one signature, right. all is lost. There's no and there's no way to force the guy except for just <laughs> like looking at him. No, man. Come on. Well, nose whistling tends to do the trick. Yeah. Come on, man. So, okay. <laughs> Meanwhile, back at Taggart International. Dagny comes in and, and like bitches at Jim for the state of the railroad. You know, it's like for nobody taking care of shit when she was off in the secret valley for a month. Yeah. And she explains to him that they need to get trains to Minnesota to, quote, move the harvests. Otherwise, everyone will starve. Why does she care about starving people now? I thought that like her whole thing was like she doesn't give a shit. The whole movie is about not caring about starving people. I don't. I guess she hasn't made the turn yet, is what it is, Cecil. She still hasn't. Yeah, okay. Figured that yeah, out. Yeah, because John Galt certainly won't fucking care about him. Like, nope. Nobody in the movie will care about him. Nope. Like, that, that, nobody cares. I don't understand why this is even a plot point. John Galt starved them, if you if you follow the plot. Yeah. yeah. So, and, and this is how stupidly written this movie is, right? Like, they have their little fight. She storms out. And then, they like, the next scene is him coming to find her to tell her about a fancy dinner they have to go to together. 
We have a dinner later. Uh, you stormed out too soon. I had another line. You fucking idiots have him say that before she storms out. You dumb bastards. <laughs> really wanted her to storm out of the room into a room that he's standing in. We have a dinner <laughs> party with the Johnsons. If you want to storm back into the other room. But yeah, so, but so he goes to this dinner. This is the fucking smoke filled back room or whatever, where they're all, all the colluders have gotten together to decide that they're going to sacrifice Minnesota for the greater good. Oh, God, this is so fucking good. <laughs> because what this is, right, this is Ayn Rand who, like, smelled a history book once. And so she's she's aware that there was something with a lack of food and Stalinist Russia. So she's pretty sure they just, like, sat around and they were like, so we uh, kill this many people? And Ayn Rand was like, ja, that's what they do. Like, put it in a book. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> Sometimes they flip a coin and that state is not a state no more. Well, and yeah, and Dagny's sitting there going like, you're going to kill Minnesota. Isn't that where all the food is? And they're like, fuck, none of us, literally none of us <laughs> thought of that. <laughs> you are the first one to realize that there's food there. And then they have the whole like, you know, they all have to talk about how bad it is. So the one guy's like, well, California has threatened to secede from the union and Oregon is overrun by gangs who murder all the tax collectors. <laughs> Okay, just, just to be clear, the socialist government would be telling trains to go get the wheat to help feed the people. That's what would be happening because that's what socialism would be. The free market solution for transportation networks is murder train fucking Thunderdome. That's it's, <laughs> right. She has no idea what well, she's talking about here. Unless, of course, all the libertarians took everybody who was you know smart enough not to know that electrolytes are what plants really need with them when they went, right? The, the, the entire premise of the movie undercuts the premise of the fucking movie. <laughs> so stupid. And then all the socialist bad guys are like, okay, yeah, so we're removing the uh, Minnesota cancer from uh, yes, the yeah. United States. So what do we, cheers? Our, our cheers. Yeah, cheers. They cheers. Cheers. cheers it. And they're like, yeah, cheers it. Well, yeah, because Dagny gets a call from Eddie, right? And they're like, important train stuff. And she's like, important train stuff. I got to run. And then they're like, oh, good. She was a bit of a wet blanket on this destroying Minnesota conversation anyway. Everybody what do you gonna... think, Cuffy? What do you say, gentlemen? <laughs> Shall we cheers? I'd like you to say out my entire name. <laughs> yeah. Hey, can we just go around and just, instead of each of us saying our name, can we just all say Cuffy's name? There you go. Yeah, Let's exactly. just all do it. You know what I was thinking? Instead of, what if instead of cheers, we just say Cuffy Migs every we time? We just say Cuffy That's Migs it. every time. Go. Cuffy Migs? <laughs> Cuffy Migs. Cuffy Migs. So, so she rushes off to the train station to see what all the fuss is about. And it turns out that because of the copper shortage, all the electricity in their national rail line has gone out. Why wouldn't it be all like what if aren't they using the same electricity as everyone else? No, that's for the train electricity. Oh, OK. All right. Different. Well, yeah. yeah, but they can't get the trains in because the systems, the all of the switching systems have gone down because of the bad electricity. Right. And they can't find the systems engineer because he's been taken to John Galt Valley. What will they do? Did the pirate, like, take a can opener to all their existing wires, too? Because it yeah. seems like <laughs> they already built this part, right? <laughs> he took all the copper wire and he's out there stealing catalytic converters at night. <laughs> 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 well, no, you got to feed it copper every day. It's like No Man's Sky. You got to <laughs> yeah, feed yeah. it. <laughs> that, that is true. Yep. Yeah, so, so but she's going to take care of business, damn it. They need lanterns and colored cellophane, quick. Oh. What would they do without her? She wouldn't, they, like, nobody would know to do that if the nobody CEO didn't think... show up in her fucking shawl, right? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, she gathers around. Imagine the fucking balls yeah. to think that <laughs> you're going to gather around all these fucking smudgy train workers in your evening gown yep. and your pearl necklace to be like, all right, gentlemen, let's save Christmas <laughs> once and for all. And, and her fucking, and, her, and she's like, okay, so we're going to start with a little crafting and a little crafting. We're going to have you guys all go stand where the switches are with a red lantern and a green lantern. Jeez. I'm like, without elect, how are they communicating? They have no electricity. <laughs> Okay, so we'll say red for red and green. Oh, the trains all crashed. Oh, all fuck. of them crashed. <laughs> Every, everybody single We one. still have to communicate. And of course, as she's doing this, she looks down and John Galt is in the crowd pretending to be a rail hand. Smudgy John Galt, yes. Okay, okay. But 
this actor did not agree to get too smudgy. Right. right. Yes. Like the makeup people came over and they put a smudge on him. He was like, that's enough. That's enough. Okay. <laughs> I, I did play a handsome guy in Wonder Woman 84. Let's, uh, let's not mess up the merchandise, if you know what I'm saying. <laughs> yeah. So she's like, oh, John Galt. So she runs off to this like weird basement place where homeless people go to shit. Well, she scampers off being well, like, scampers. oh, don't yeah. follow me into this tunnel. This is not my king at all. I don't, <laughs> I don't want to get railed on the rail. Yeah. She doesn't run. She jog walks for yes, sure. A hundred percent jog walks. Uh, yeah. She scampers and, and John scampers after her and they fuck. To this music. Boom, 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 the best part is her clearing the table off, though. Yes. She runs in and she like throws everything off the table and then spins herself around. And I 100% wanted to be like a whole Thanksgiving table. So she walked in, she just pulls the tablecloth out. She's like, and the flowers are still standing. Yeah. <laughs> Fucking amazing. Oh, it's, but it's like somebody's workbench. It's like all of their plans and oh, shit. So she great. doesn't give a fuck. They just pan over to some guy who's also awesome. like, are you serious right now? <laughs> <He's> <laughs> My fucking donut. I'm here. He's got his thermos out. Yes. Like, what the fuck? I'm doing the crossword. I'm like four feet away. I'm on my 15, lady. Come oh, on. Guys, I'm I'm about to solve the wordle. But if you got if you could wait for me to finish the wordle before you do your oh, weird rich God. person fuck on my table. So yeah, so then they fuck to the the, the the soundtrack the soundtrack I had as but then the kids decided to make their own Christmas decorations, but they're fucking to it. Yep. Uh -huh. And mid sexing, mid fucking, we cut to an old conductor going, Well, darn it, them manual train signals do work. They work just fine. <laughs> and then we go back for more fucking. Yes, and then back to fucking, directly yep. back to fucking from that. Dirty to me. With this music play? Dude, are you playing that, <laughs> sir? With the crossword? Are you putting, is that on your phone? What I you brought doing? this baseball organ for me to uh, help okay. me with the wordle. Okay. All right, now it makes it's like, sense. It's like number six on the Casio. Yeah, so. John, uh, I still, let's still do it. Talk dirty to me. Chicago Milton Friedman <laughs> supply meets demand. All right. Well, I'll tell you what, if there has been any consistent thread through these movies, it's that act two ends with, but then they managed to train after all. So with that in mind, we're going to take ourselves a quick break. <laughs> but first, let me give act three the hard sell. Why bother having a pirate if all you're going to do with him is have somebody run into him at a fucking farmer's market? Thank you. How would this be different if he'd been, say, a florist or a CPA? Right? <laughs> Could this one not get the rights to the character of Hank Reardon? <laughs> By now, the answers to nothing a sane person would have bothered to ask in the first place when we return for the mawkish conclusion of Atlas Shrugged. Who is John Galt? And then you could just spread the marrow on the cheese toast. We have to go. Right? Yeah, that actually sounds really good. Hey, guys. Hey, Eli. Is, is everything okay? I mean, for me, yes, but guys, I got some bad news for you. I, uh, I quit the podcast. You what? I know, I know, but as much fun as we've had making fun of these movies, I've realized that I, too, am John Galt, and I can no longer allow society, and by society I mean you, mooch off my most valuable asset, my mind, a mind which built the very company on which you all stand. Okay, well, first of all, Heath and I started the company and, and invited you to join. Yeah, and I have a grown-up job that I work at. Oh, I knew you guys would grasp at straws. I don't blame you, but I must now earn only by my own hand and ask no man to live but for me. No, I mean, we, we, I guess we understand. Where, where are you going to go? Where are you headed? I don't know. Somewhere to make my fate with my mind. Sure, yeah, make your fate. Um, you're not going to use roads, though, right? At all. Roads. The government made the roads, so mm -hmm. other people. Oh, right. Yeah, no, <laughs> I will not be using the roads. I shall uh, cool. take to the woods at first. Well, so actually, most of the woods in the continental United States, anyway, are maintained by the government. What? Yeah. Huh. Okay, well, I'll, I'll take to woods that aren't overseen by any government. Sure, sure. Um, But just quick thing. Also, your clothes... 
were made using like trade deals and they were delivered by the postal service. So you, okay, just, okay. you, really you know what? This is ridiculous. I, I don't want to give up all the stuff I have. I just want to stop giving back. What is that? I, I, is there a word for someone who wants to use like society and the social safety net until they feel like it would be better for them to personally not give back? Can I, what's that thing called? Yeah, man, that's called an asshole. Asshole. Yep. Oh, am I an asshole? It seems like it, man. Yeah. Yeah. Look like it. Um, did you just say your greatest gift is your mind like moments ago? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Uh, I saw you lick a magazine the other day. It smelled good. How did it taste? Bad. Yeah. <laughs> magazine. A lone sample. <laughs> okay, well, I can send it back as undeliverable because I don't need that many friendship bracelets. No, I didn't order. Th- I didn't order any of these. Hey, Caesar. Hey, Eli. Who's Eli? It's me, Tom, your best friend. Bulgaria is the third woo. Okay. First of all, Tom knows who you are, so he wouldn't say, who's Eli? Also, you're very clearly not Tom. You just filled your shirt with balloons and dyed your hair. Is that pink? Did you dye your hair pink? Ricky's was out of red, but I don't know what you're talking about. I'm Tom, and these are my muscles. I mean, look. I'm not trying to indulge this, but if you want to get in shape, why don't you try FitBod? What's FitBod? FitBod's innovative algorithm learns your goals and your training abilities and crafts a personalized training regimen that's unique to you. Or hypothetically to a person whose identity you wanted to assume. I mean, I guess so. You also have access to your personalized routine on their easy-to-use mobile app, so you can start making progress on your goals anytime, anywhere. It's true. I've been using FitBud to do some workouts at home, and it changes your workouts as you go, so you never get bored. No, what are you doing here? Oh, Eli had me dress up as Tom's wife in case he wasn't selling it hard enough. Well, I, admittedly, you look great. Right? I think I might keep these shorts. So kick the new year off right and get started on your customized fitness plan from FitBod. Get 25% off your membership when you sign up now at FitBod.me slash GAM. That's 25% off your membership at FitBod.me slash GAM. Sounds good. Uh, you ready to drop the uh, act now, Eli? I'm not Eli. I'm Tom. Uh, I'm scared of computers. Okay. Maybe you're Tom. And and maybe I'm Tom's wife? Definitely not. Defin- definitely not. Oh, man. And we're back for the ninth, ninth of this dumbass movie. And we're going to rejoin the action with the narrator, oh, by the way, his way through some major plot points, right? This is like, oh, and um, Hank Rudin uh, disappeared into the valley. Um, and also, remember Jim's wife? <laughs> you guys, remember Cheryl? Nope, nobody cares. The- <laughs> nobody cares. Yeah. They spent so much time. It's like, we have not seen Cheryl at all in this movie. And they're like, but eventually she realized that Jim was a fraud. And that stuff that she was saying to Dagny in the second movie, she apologized. <laughs> and then he killed her. Yes. And then they got a sepia divorce right afterwards. It was very nice. A sepia murder, <laughs> though. Like, they, they they strongly suggest that either he murdered her or that she killed herself after this. I don't, they, they never specify, right? Well, yeah, somebody somebody calls James up and they're like, hey, sorry, your wife died. And he's like, it wasn't me. I, I didn't murder her. murder her. And the guy's like, what? Yeah, I love that you say somebody, Cuffy calls him. It's Cuffy Miggs. Yeah. Wait, who was it? <laughs> it was a, a gentleman by the name of Cuffy Miggs. You may have heard of him. He's from New York. Wow. Very, very big deal. Cuffleford T. Miggs. <laughs> <laughs> no way. Uh, and I also, and Cuffy immediately after that, he's like, yeah, sorry about your wife. And he's like, I didn't murder her. And he's like, I didn't say you did. He's like, good. And he goes, speaking to your dead <laughs> wife. <laughs> he goes, but then the conversation segues. He goes, speaking to your dead wife, your sister's on board with the evil government train speech, right? That the head of state is going to give later in the movie. And he's like, yeah, sure. Yep. So, all right. Just wanted to check on the dead wife and that. <laughs> uh, Cuffy, before I let you go, do you know how to dissolve a body in acid? Because I... <laughs> I feel like I saw it on TV, but where? Turns out the head, the skull is just man. Woo! Look, I gotta let you go. My my poached egg is coming. I'm sorry. I gotta <laughs> I gotta let you go. My I called you egg. at the breakfast table. Get- <laughs> so sorry. The grapefruit express showed up. I gotta go, guys. <laughs> <laughs> gotta get eat this stalk of wheat. It's really dry. <laughs> and. <laughs> 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 More like coffee mix, am I right? Huh? <laughs> <laughs> and then, by the way, we flashback. We spend like seven minutes 
flashing back to Cheryl, finding out that Jim's a fraud and arguing with him about who did start the John Galt line and who didn't, apologizing to Dagny. Dagny, forgetting, we're like, we don't care. Literally, it doesn't matter. It would be physically impossible for us to care. Show us a goddamn pirate. I will murder you. <laughs> no. They don't trust. Uh, so, okay. Now it's time for Thompson's big speech. And Dagny is uh, apparently going to sit next to him for this speech because, you know, America's just not going to approve of his ideas if he's not accompanied by the most trusted railroad mogul <laughs> in all the land. He's the number one train person in the world. I will not listen to his speech unless he is flanked <laughs> equally. <laughs> By a cartoon child and the head of all the railroads. The train That's lady. Amazing. Not even the head, though. She's the COO. Jim Taggart is the head of the company. <laughs> but, <laughs> but yeah, so they're about to do the speech. And at the last second, she's like, you know what? Fuck it. I'm not even in this scene. They're like, I could have sworn you were in this scene. She storms out. She stops by Jim on her way out the fucking door. And she's like, by the way, your dead wife deserved better than you, Jim. <laughs> I'm like, wow. Rough. We don't even know. Like, harsh lady. Ouch. I'll tell the corpse that when I get home. <laughs> and I'm thinking to myself, oh, so you just swap Jim in, right? He sits next to the president instead. They're completely lost. They don't know what the fuck to do. No idea. No, no. idea. There's no producer in the room. There's not a producer in there. They pull the chair off and he's trying to scooch over. Yeah. Like, <laughs> I really wanted a long, squeaky chair sequence. It's just like, so <laughs> amazing. <laughs> uh, so amazing. <laughs> So yeah, so he he's about to give his speech anyway, and damn it if John Galt doesn't take over the airwaves. For a second, it's black. For a second, the screen is black, and I'm like, please be Max Hedrum. Please be Max Hedrum. Please be Max Hedrum. <laughs> Please be Max Hedrum. It's not. Okay. Nope. It's John Galt. John, this is so stupid. It's This is his giant fucking speech. He takes, somehow he hacks the TV all of broadcast of yep. all America. He hacks it something. all. Yep. And his stupid fucking face pops onto the screen, but he's in like a a dark room, so you can't see his yeah. It's like backlit yeah face uh -huh. at first, except for some electric zaps. I was genuinely expecting him to be like, "Oh, sorry, they're telling me I'm not in my light. Is this better?" <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Right. What? Did, what? Did, so he set up his room to to have yeah. that happen, so that he would so have like be he set up electric zaps in his own room <laughs> with like for stuff to short out so it'd be like John Galt <laughs> and of course this is the infamous 60 page speech that anchors this whole stupid what? fucking book yeah in the book he goes on for 60 goddamn pages no I literally walked away from my screen at this point I was like this is a 19 hour speech I've read this book I'm literally walking away yep. I walked away yep Thank goodness they did the condensed version. Well, that's the best thing. They did by a lot. Is that they condensed this speech. But when you condense the speech down, it's like, hi, my name is John Galt and I ran away with all my cool rich friends. And if you, I'll fucking put you. <laughs> I'll put you. And hiya. I didn't want to have to show you my axe karate skills, but here we go. Kia. 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 Right. <laughs> I wrote a conceptual penis hoax once. It's really cool. Here's my axe kata. <laughs> Talk really fast on Dr. Anyway, Phil. Anyway, if you're the number one ranked person at a thing in the world, yeah. uh, we have room for like 10 more people. In our, we have a small <laughs> yeah. valley. We need a fleshlight guy. Seriously? Is there a fleshlight guy? <laughs> There's two women. Yeah. I, you, so here's the thing. I've never read the speech and I never will. But like it takes a lot of like... I don't know, massaging when your point is society doesn't adequately compensate the billionaires. Yep. Right. They don't have massaging here. Right. So he has to jump right into his the, like the fuck society portion of his speech. And of course, they have to make this work for the movie. So we see crowds of people, you know, gathering around the TV shop windows in the streets as people are wont to do in real life. Yeah. <laughs> All watching the speech together going, yeah, you know what? Fuck us right in our stupid asses. <laughs> rebel, rebel, we are stupid and don't deserve to have anything. Rebel, rebel. His conclusion, too, is like, get out of our way. I'm like, bitch, you went to hide. Fuck you. How about you right. got out of our way? Right. 
Yeah, he's given the whole who's with me speech from Jerry Maguire all of a sudden. Yes, yep. Again. Yeah. And of course, you're going like, hey, look, like we just saw the room where the government is controlling this broadcast. They could shut it down. Why wouldn't they just <laughs> they would just shut it down? <laughs> no, they don't. But then we nope. get the like that, you know, vertical color bars and the long beep when he stops. So he set up <laughs> the vertical color bars. Because <laughs> <the long beep>. <laughs> right. they don't have that. <laughs> this is 2014. Yeah. So, and, and of course, the, immediately after the color bars go off, we cut to Sean Hannity going, fuck, yes, that was 60 pages of brilliance. Mm, oh my God, I came so hard. I'm Sean Hannity. <laughs> <laughs> oh, let me tell you, that was fucking great. Oh, yeah. Yeah. I love that. <laughs> my favorite part about that whole thing, though, with Sean Hannity is that he's not invited to the island. Oh, you're right. Like Sean Hannity <laughs> and all these other pundits, like they keep going back. To, they, they're going to mention another pundit in a second. None of those people got invited to the fucking tropical fucking you're libertarian right. paradise. They're all sucking its dick from back in the hell hole. No, they're furious because Colbert got taken because they didn't realize it was satire. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. The best. Yeah. Ted Cruz. I wish John Galt would insult my wife. <laughs> <laughs> and so, yeah, all the government guys gather up together and they're like aggressively pointing out that them not cutting the broadcast was not a hole in the script. They would, because if we did that, then we would have made a martyr out of him. Yeah. <laughs> okay, I guess as long as we don't make a martyr out of him in the last third of the movie. Yeah. <laughs> guys, pinky swear on this? No martyrs. How's that? Yeah. There you go. <laughs> so, yeah, but he wants to make a deal with John Gold, pre head of the state. Thompson wants to make a deal with John Gold. And she's like, well, I don't know where to find him. And they're like, she totally knows where to find him. <laughs> Keep a spy on her. They, she knows. She's fucking with If anybody could follow her, maybe Cuffy Miggs isn't busy. Maybe he yeah, could just. Yeah, right. <laughs> somebody who isn't suspicious. Follow her around with a magnifying glass. <laughs> And of course, we have to cut to like all the sheeple sure being woken up by John Galt's speech, right? So like the crowds just are like standing outside of the TV store windows, start chanting, we want Galt to one another. Oh, to yeah. the TV. Right. To the TV. <laughs> yes, they do. But they show us yes. the group chanting, we want Galt. And then they show us John fucking Galt standing there in that group. So he clearly was like, we want Galt. <laughs> <laughs> what? No, I was totally saying uh, just the drunken guy in a Rangers jersey trying to start a USA chant on the subway. <laughs> you, uh, okay, that has never failed on a New York no, subway. It you start yeah. saying USA, it works. Oh, Patreon goal. I will take Ethan on a subway <laughs> and he will fail. I will win so US. hard. Uh, we will be singing. I'll bet any amount of money. Any amount of money. We will be singing. America the Beautiful by the end of that subway ride all together except you in your face. See, I thought that the goal was th that Eli could start it in such a way that people wouldn't join in and that one I would bet on Eli. So yeah, <laughs> so, yeah but then we get this, this shot where like the many screens are all popping up with different people saying, I am John Gold. And I guarantee you that this is like <sighs> everyone who donated more than a hundred bucks on Kickstarter. It sure the fuck <laughs> That's is. That's who we're seeing. Oh. No. Dude with a Bitcoin shirt. Dude with a Bitcoin oh, shirt. Then, There's yeah, a guy absolutely, okay. with the, <laughs> the Bitcoin sign <laughs> saying, I am John Gold. <laughs> that guy killed himself now. He is dead right <laughs> that now. That guy lost half his money last month. And then, so <laughs> Shouldn't have listened to Carrot Top. <laughs> so and then, so, and then fucking Glenn Beck pops in for a talking head cameo. Right. Oh. Glenn Beck. Also not on the island. I forgot how fucking crazy <laughs> Glenn Beck looks. He looks like a traitor owl. And every time I see him, I'm like, oh no, that's <laughs> that's <laughs> like an LGBTQ hire for like Dumbledore or something, right? That's not Glenn Beck. That's uh that's a time traveling rapist. <laughs> <laughs> He's about to die from COVID. I'm pretty sure. I, my fingers crossed. He got COVID fingers. for the second time again because he? he refused oh, to nice. get the vaccine. 
And he he had to come out and be like, yeah, it's real bad. It's like into my lungs now. And I'm like, oh, I'm like very, uh, very unhealthy. To I wasn't with. expecting. <laughs> so now you want to start a chant on a subway. Die of COVID. <laughs> die Glenn Beck. But die that Glenn would, Beck that would, would probably work. Yeah, that was the USA. USA yep. mm -hmm. In New York, especially, I agree. Yeah. Competing yep. chance. <laughs> so Chicago on the L, you do the USA. That's happening right away, right? Well, hey, on Chicago, sure. <laughs> You guys are patriotic out there, you know? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, sure. Beautiful country out there. <laughs> you pulled it off, man. Nicely well, done. Man. Thank you. So meanwhile, at the at the White House, everybody says, I love this. They, they have like several scenes that are going to happen at the White House now. And everybody's like, there's crowds outside chanting about their love for John Galt. But they have the chanting way too loud for the dialogue. Like you could barely tell what's going on for the dialogue because there are people shouting immediately off camera. <laughs> <laughs> we won't go. We, but the but the president's sick of it. He needs to meet with John Galt. Damn it! So he has this like bring me Dagny Taggart moment. Oh, this is a bit because Ayn Rand <laughs> in 1956 when she was writing this was certain that Dwight Eisenhower was about to call her because she was that important. So she put this in. I love it so much. Oh God, you're right. <laughs> You're right. Well, this is her meeting with the president and then and going like, well, you should just do what John Galt told you and dismantle the entire government. Yep. Well, hello there, Dwight Eisenhower. <laughs> yep. I will tell you, the only thing I like about you is your very normal name, so Dwight <laughs> Eisenhower. So, yeah, but then they offer to pay her to sell out John Galt. And that's where she storms out. She storms out of a lot of rooms in this movie, but she storms. This is the last room storming out that she's going to do. I like how they try to soft sell her on it. They're like, look, we don't want to murder him. But if what if but someone if, who no, did, did. If somebody <laughs> murdered him before you found him for us, how the hell would we even know? Look, we don't want to murder him, but I can't speak for Cuffy. <laughs> so... so, yeah. And so she storms out and I love it. Evil government guy, Vigo the Carpathian. He turns to the president and he goes, do you think she's lying? And then we hear her reach the door and open it. She is standing in front of them when he's like, I'm do you here. think we should kill her? Oh. <laughs> I'm still in the room, guys. Murder. No, I know you're still there. Mur we're going to murder Murder him. you. Murder. Her eyes are based on movement. Hold very still. <laughs> so, <laughs> what are her ears kids. based on? <laughs> and then, also movement. We're talking about murder. Movement? You have movement ears? Yeah, it's like, like a bat. Like a bat. Sonar. Here when I move. One, two, three, go. And then murder. Ron fucking Paul makes a quick talking yeah. head cameo. They don't need politicians in the land of libertarians either, by the way. So he's yeah, still right. Here. No, he also didn't get the call yet. Ron, but Ron Paul named his child. I after know. Ayn Rand. <laughs> so Yikes. Stupid. So meanwhile, Dagny is frantically trying to find John Galt with her computer. Now, th this is so stupid because I'm like. That's going to be a tough Google because like who is John Galt is the saying. You can't just Google that. <laughs> but All right. Maybe if I bing it, let me bing it. That's less popular. You got to duck. Look, if you're a libertarian and you want information, yeah. you've got to duck, duck, go. Duck, duck, that's, go. Yes. That's the libertarian Google <laughs> that's, that's for true. sure. Yep. So, but, but it turns out that John Galt's dumbass, the fucking master spy secret, nobody can figure out who he is. The Who he is is the saying for an unanswerable question. Signed up for his fake railroad job under his real goddamn name. His real name? <laughs> his real name. Yep. I feel like somebody would have pointed that out, right? Oh, you're John Galt. They're at, they always yeah. ask about you. Put his real address on it. He's real a stickler address. for ethics about HR paperwork. That's, you know, <laughs> that's important. Absolutely. <laughs> Virtue. What? And then she's got a USB drive that has this information on it, and then she breaks it like Donald <laughs> Trump ripping up paper. Yes, right. And flushes it down a toilet. I was really expecting her to try to eat it. Just yeah. like, <laughs> oh, oh, you can't. Sharp. I'd need at least a drink. Does anybody have any wheat to Even. wash this down? <laughs> <laughs> so she goes to the seedy apartment that he's staying in. They, they make out a little bit. He explains to her that she's been followed. She's definitely been followed. And there's very little chance that he can make it out alive. Yes, but you have to live because this is so fucking funny. I laughed so hard. He goes, if you die, I will kill myself. <laughs> totally does. 100%. <laughs> so now she has an incentive to not die. That's great. It's yeah. great that he gave her that. That's true. 
I did enjoy when he nagged her here for a second, though. He's like, so they need me alive because I'm, you know, amazing. I know everything. Uh, motor, cold fusion. They'll happily kill you, though. Trains are, it, I mean, that's like a metal track, so right? Everybody like, what, knows what, everybody how know, it, there's no <laughs> trains work. It's literally a toy for children. I, I, we keep calling you the number one ranked train. Per- I don't even know what that means. That's so dumb. <laughs> but they need me because I'm real. I really have a thing. But you need to pretend that you hate me and that you're siding with the government. Right. That's the plan here. And they, they execute it so badly. And, and and she's like, oh, I'm sure that there will be some reason for that that's revealed at some point later in the script. He's like, oh, no, no, absolutely yeah, not. No. I'm just saying those words yeah. because they're in a, on a piece of paper that I have to read from. And and then she's and he's like, but maybe there's something that you should see before they get here. And she's like. Is it the motor? And he's like, yes. And she's like, why the fuck would you have? That makes no sense at all. <laughs> what would it be even doing? <laughs> he's paying New York City rent. He's saving on the utility bill. So he brought <laughs> okay, an yeah, electrostatic no, dynamo yeah. savings to power mm-hmm. his laptop yeah. in his shitty <laughs> <laughs> studio apartment. Yeah. yeah. Oh, no, I can run Dying Light 2 on this thing. It's great. I've got this whole thing. <laughs> mining bitcoins as we speak. <laughs> You're the worst. I can't spend them, though, in my little valley. <laughs> so he closes the door to the to the motor. And just then the cops get there and the cops bust in. And he's like, I hate this lady so much. And she's like, I hate this guy so much. And the cops are like, oh, they must really hate each <laughs> other. <laughs> I am fooling. <laughs> so bad. <laughs> Hold on. Do you like her? Blech. No. Oh, OK. <laughs> they must not. I don't like him. Blech. Also, <laughs> well, they both said yuck, so that's what it is. You're free to go, man. And also, okay, I'm sure that there was something that was supposed to be explained here, but like the cops start searching his apartment, and one of them breaks into the room with the motor, but he can't see it because he's not libertarian enough. Yeah, I thought it disintegrated. I thought it because, no, if you're if you're a socialist and you walk into a libertarian motor room, it turns into feathers. What was yeah. I don't know what was supposed to have happened. That's a well-known physical principle. Self-destructed. Read a book. What's great is that John Galt, they break down the door and they're like, nothing in here. And it no, it's full of feathers. Yeah. I want John Galt to be like, that's my, my feather room. Feathers, feathers room. room. <laughs> it's next to my tar room. I go in there first <laughs> and I come in here. I assumed that we were eventually gonna so I, I kept trying to make a better movie. I assumed that we were eventually gonna find out that they put the Wakanda force field over it or something and then in order to turn it off you had to say the speech thing the 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 oath to selfishness or whatever right because they kept saying that like holy shit that actually right that would be better that actually fixed this ridiculous plot yeah right but i had it they had it in front of them it's so fucking dumb but yeah so stupid but at any rate no instead it just disappears or turns into feathers or something and then we take they take john galt to meet with the head of state Oh, and this is so fucking stupid. Number one, it doesn't fucking matter. But number two, it's so fucking stupid. He leaves his phone on, right? Like he's, John Gold's going into the meeting and he dials Dagny's number and just leaves it going. I'm like, oh yeah, the Secret Service would never think of that. Yeah, <laughs> I needed somebody to be like, hey man, uh, just take your pocket, your phone out of your pocket and, and put it back in. because <laughs> We can see that you're doing that. Our eyes are based on motion and you move. <laughs> <laughs> oh, let me... Uh... Don't worry, I'll 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 throw him off the scent. Yuck! I hate this phone. Well, he did say yuck. He hates that phone. <laughs> Carry on, sir. But not only is that such a stupid way to make this happen, but it never matters. There's no reason why it matters that Dagny hears this conversation. Yeah, no, right? That they never. Like, she doesn't record it. She doesn't broadcast it. Nothing not, happens. Learn anything from it? Yeah. yeah. She doesn't hack into the entire television. No, w- no, yeah, of nothing. The broadcast universe. No, nothing. Yeah, yeah. She just knows about it. That's it. So, right. So the the head of state is there to make a deal with him. He wants to offer him Wesley Mouch's job, right? Now, Wesley Mouch is the czar of the economy in the first two movies. He's the boss of Cuffy Miggs. Yes, he's Cuffy's boss. (laughs) You would be in charge of Cuffy Miggs if you take this job. Yeah, direct report. And, And this guy's job, by the way, is to like do whatever he wants to the economy with no oversight. Why would he not take that job? <laughs> right? Like he would say, like he would say, like I my my first act as as my job is that my job doesn't exist anymore, and then he would win. Yep. <laughs> we already built a bunch of cabins and made a 
<laughs> we made a lot of coins. We did a lot. We, I, we have so many there's gold a farmer's coins. Market. It's, there's not enough kinds of apples and peppers yet, but we're getting there. You know, it's nice. You remember Milton Friedman's kid made the barges? We did like a Colorado <laughs> version of that. Well, the barges didn't work because that's dumb, but ours is, <laughs> is pretty cool. Yeah. I have an 85 Wagoneer. So... <laughs> Our pirate's going through some pre-diabetic screening right now. It's just not a good time for us to move out of the valley. Yeah, and but he won't take it. They You can't buy off John Galt, damn it. But they have a laugh off at a certain point. Oh, yeah, there's they a, do. There's a certain uh-huh. point in this where they're negotiating. It's so long. And then they have a, like a really weird long laugh off. And you can tell the guy's <laughs> evil because he's laughing through his teeth the whole time. So they're like, mm-hmm. no, man, you got to evil up your laugh. The director keeps coming in like, no, nah, man, you got to evil up. He's like, uh-huh. I'm uh-huh. like, <laughs> oh, is it me? <laughs> 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 Are we still rolling? <laughs> well, and then apparently the the contest that's going on is like whoever laughs the longest wins, and John Galt <laughs> outlaughs all of them. Wait, <laughs> nailed it. Yeah, and so they take him to the State Science Institute for some torture. Oof, so fucking stupid. Some Project F, if you will. This is my favorite part of the movie. Okay, just to be clear, they're going to torture him for the the answer to economics. Right, they they never ask him any questions. There's no position. There's they seem to be trying to change or anything like that. You're right. They're torturing him so that they'll have a chance to tell us what Project F is. They won't, by the way, tell us what Project F is. What would he be able to tell them to stop I getting don't, tortured? Right. What was the answer they thought? They I were don't to get? know. They never. He was going to just dictate the schematics to his energy device while he was being tortured. I think. But they didn't ever ask about the energy device. No. They don't even know about the only Dagny <laughs> knows that he had that Dagny and Hank Reardon. That's true. It's so. But that one guy watched the first two movies, so he oh, might well, know. Oh, that's true. Yeah, right. Yeah, Cuffy probably yeah. knows. Cuffy knows. Also. The fucking narrator cuts in at this point and says, oh, also um, the, on page 721, the Taggart Bridge collapsed. <laughs> oh, fuck. That doesn't By matter way. at all, does it? Why am I even telling you this? Uh, a, a bridge collapsed because of too many government Too many government rules. regulations. Yes. Yes. Just to be clear. Way down. Yeah, that, that old story. They regulated it into destruction, a bridge. The literal phrasing the narrator uses that the bridge finally, quote, surrendered to regulation. Wait, did they actually say that? Yeah. Yes. Yes. <laughs> that was the term. Fucking yikes. He's less of a narrator now as he is like a hardcore Star Trek fan who won't stop whispering in your ear about, like, you know, that costume was actually designed. By- I- hey, hey, stop it. You guys don't know this, but he's actually the number one pianist in the whole world. It doesn't. This show is bad and I'm watching it for you. Stop whispering in my ear. <laughs> So, yeah, so we cut back to Dagny. Francisco has rushed to her side to be with her in her moment of need or whatever. He paid the $40 a gallon gas prices for the taxi. How the hell do these guys stay in business? I have no <laughs> Anyway, <laughs> but she's ready to take the pledge to selfishness, right? The Pledge of Allegiance to the Valley of No Rules. I just want to be clear to her. about like, what they're describing. <laughs> that's, that's what they're saying is happening. Well, and what's so fucking funny is she's like, I'm ready to live only for myself and never give a shit about anyone else. And he's like, great. And she's like, now let's go save. Let's go rescue John Gulf. John. Fuck, this makes no yeah. sense. We'll negotiate how much he's paying us later. <laughs> so, yeah, they, they tell him that Ragnar's helicopter standing by. So they have to go. <laughs> Ragnar's helicopter. You <laughs> motherfucker. <laughs> so Ragnar had a helicopter this whole movie and he doesn't even use it until now. Why isn't his boat? What the fuck, man? Why don't they have him near water and a Ragnar's ship could be nearby? But no. If we had just watched Ragnar <laughs> struggling up into a helicopter for five <laughs> seconds. Uh, oh, okay. Oh. Do we have one of those little Can step boost, stool things? Boost? Why, why don't we just have oh, a little set of steps? You could just hand them down I'm a little to winded. Me. Like, I'm a little like winded. Noah's cat. My blood sugar's low. I need an Small apple. winch. I need a Subway sandwich. <laughs> So then they take John Galt to the Project F torture device. <laughs> this is the silliest looking thing. So who put this? Somebody just pasted a picture of this thing. I did. And I just did it because I wanted you guys to to look at it and be like, that looks like the original Doctor Who set. Yeah. Yep. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, like. That if that had wheels, it'd be a Dalek. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Like that's fucking what it looks like. Yeah, it's it's a steampunk torture device somehow. Yeah, it has yeah. a yeah. 
It's bad cosplay torture device. It That's has a what three it is. Three digit scoreboard for yeah. <laughs> torture <laughs> units. That's how you know how many years you took off their life, Heath. That's yep. what that's for. Oh, I yeah. see. Yes. Uh -huh. uh, so there's a red light and a green light and a red, yellow, blue light. There's a red, red yellow, and blue. These buttons. That's their number. <laughs> these are video game buttons. These are standard video game buttons that you buy. Oh, yeah. Yep. These are low kick, high kick buttons, my friend. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. <laughs> but they're going to torture him with it. Now, here's the thing. It has a throttle. Sorry. It, it has does. a yes, throttle. It does. It does. 100%. Uh -huh. yeah, Why yeah, is that throttle. so big? Yeah, it's <laughs> why couldn't that just be a, a, a switch? I a have a, I have another question for you. Okay, I get the throttle. What are all the other buttons? Because it's just on and off, right? <laughs> they just turn it on and then they turn it off and they turn it on because it's it, look as far as we can tell, it's just electrocuting it. Yep, yep. Right. We we are never told what Project F is. Yeah, they put the silliest possible cat collar around his neck. Mm -hmm. This actor, by the way, did not get into the shape he wanted to for this scene. Mm, like no. you could just tell he was like, "Oh, I thought we were doing this scene in like two weeks." <laughs> I was gonna, oh, gonna I'm on a bowl. I love lasagna. But, and they were like, "No cat collar." Yeah, <laughs> yeah, no, totally. You're two weeks away from being ripped. Uh, sorry <laughs> just about that. suck it in. Just suck it in the whole time. Yep. Suck it in. Yep. Three, two, one. Suck in. Okay. <laughs> There's also this weird moment where they're like, James Stagger, you have to leave the Project F torture area. And he's like, no, I totally want to watch John Gull get tortured. And they're like, oh, okay. He says it really weirdly, too. By the way. He's like, no, I really want to. I want to be here. And he like yeah. starts panting. Yeah, and right. like, what is wrong okay. with you, dude? I mean, in fairness, same, right? Like, yeah, you right. You know, I'm with him. I get it. It's I fair. get it. It's just it's a fair. weird delivery. See, for me, it was like, you ever be in a room and everyone's about to do drugs and there's a very clearly the person who's going to ruin it. So you're like, hey, do you want to fucking leave? And they're like, no, I fucking love it here. Yeah, let's light up a doopy snake. And you're like, ah, Jim, you're kind of killing the mood of this torture. You know, that's you in the drug rooms, right? Right, it is. How dare you? <laughs> Lashing out at me. Heath cut this. So they start up their silly electricity machine. We see now Dagny and Francisco and all the other guys, they're all yeah. sneaking in, playing guns like secret agents. They're sneaking into the government facility, right? Okay. <laughs> I have to talk about the murder scene. Yes. This uh -huh. is my favorite part of the whole movie. Where she go goes to the guard and she's like, hi, I'm supposed to be here. And he's like, oh, I'm not supposed to let anyone in. So she pulls a gun on him. He's like, I'm just a peon. I swear. I wasn't supposed to make any decisions. And she shoots him and he's dead. To be clear, that was the movie being like, sometimes you're going to have to murder relatively innocent people for our libertarian dream. Yep. Just so you know. <laughs> yep. Well, and I love the guy, like the, the security guard has the weirdest don't shoot me. He never, He's like, hey, look, my job description does not include bartering for my life with billionaire <laughs> railway moguls. I am going to file a grievance with the union. So you know what? Bad. I'm technically on my 15 right now. I don't. <laughs> so bad. This is not. No, it's do not so murder bad. me. I'm on my. Ah, you shot me. <laughs> He says, I don't make decisions about my life is what he yes, says out yeah, loud. She <laughs> says those words. And then she shoots him in the sleepy time spot. Yeah. This oh, is yeah. the silliest death, right? Like she just shoots him in like <laughs> the hardish area. Nothing happens to him. There's no entry or exit wound whatsoever. And he just kind of falls asleep. <laughs> just slumps. <laughs> so. It's the slumping gun. So we cut back to the torture stuff. They're still electrocuting away. But now there's a problem with the machine and John Galt has taken the number one through 17 top torture machine repairmen. Yes. For the, and so they got nobody that can fix the machine. They're all too dumb now. <laughs> and John Galt is such an addicted fucking mansplainer that he literally tells them how to fix their torture device. Yep. Yep. Yeah, he tells them the fuse blew out and then they all are like, oh, well, we should all go change it. Why don't Let's all, all of us, of us just go, together go find like, another just, It's like a horror movie. If we split up, we're well, fucked. Let's just go. You, take In James. Coffee, room. can you take James? We're going to go. And then they leave, they leave in slow-mo. It's so and it's, good. It's and so he turns good. back and he's like, We'll be back. <laughs> oh, my my name is Cuffle Town. It's, so good. Yeah. it's just like it's fucking Chef Kiss Beautiful. It is so amazing. That scene, you're like, why did they slow it down? Like yep. Someone's like, I just got the new iPhone, you know, like where you could like make it go it's, slow. Yeah, right, right. Exactly. It sounds so he sounds evil that way, doesn't he? <laughs> And then so and then they leave and John flatlines out of spite. He's like, oh, I'm going to die while you guys are going to say you like that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> He's not even being 
George Kennedy just dies. Fucker ups and dies while he's just hanging out. When people torture you, do they put you on a device that has the flatline thing? Yeah. Do you think that's normal? <laughs> that's yeah. very important, yeah. I, I don't know that most people do, but I think Cuffy Miggs would. Cuffy I think would, he yeah, would. He's, that's Cuffy yeah, no, would. Cuffy's he's, that kind of guy. He's thorough. He's a perfectionist. He's a good man. Yeah. But Dagny runs in just as he starts flatlining, right? She's got to do the fucking Trinity thing, right? So she romantically pledges the oath to never help stupid, gross, poor people. <laughs> I'll never help you. <laughs> yeah, and that brings it back from the dead. It works. Just to be clear, promising to never help poor people wakes John Galt up like clapping wakes up Tinkerbell. <laughs> <laughs> yep. Everybody promised not to help uh, poor people. Come on. She might as well have him snort a bootstrap like smelling yeah. salts and he just snaps right up. <laughs> Quick, Ronald Reagan, trickle your economics down onto him. <laughs> so, yeah, so he grabs his bootstraps and pulls himself up all the way to Francisco's helicopter. Oh. <laughs> they they landed a helicopter like on the Pentagon, right? Like yes, they're in yeah, like the White right. House of the Pentagon. They landed their secret I, maybe it's an invisible helicopter. Can they make a helicopter invisible with their Probably, name? you know, as long as you... Okay. Yeah, yeah, if you burst through the door. Because we can see it in the movie. Yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> so, and they're also, like, at this time, too, the, the music is all very patriotic. It's all that... <laughs> Wait, are we supposed to fuck to this? It's like a fucking horns and snare drum. Yep. It's all like a fucking national anthem. It's the most ridiculous <laughs> music at the time. And and they, it's it's all this suspenseful shit. And they're running around with guns. They never shoot anybody. Nothing happens no. at any point. So they get to the helicopter. The, the head of state shakes his fist at the sky. You know, he's very upset. <laughs> he pets his cat or whatever. He'll get gadget next time. Galt. Yeah, right. And then we cut to Dagny and Galt on the helicopter together. She says, the, the lines are so bad. She says, John, you're my forever. And I so wanted him to be like, I don't really like labels. I'm not a label. Yeah. Kind of guy. Oh. So, um, wow. So I'm in in I'm the valley, like, we don't I really just, do monogamy. I'm your crazy. This, it's not. this week. I'm this, this definitely now. the next time. I'm kind of with the girl with the unvaccinated Maybe kids. So. I don't know if you know, but... <laughs> I thought you had something going with the steel guy too. Were you? I not? like her. I like her croissant. Maybe you guys do it a little bit. Then we flip it around. For some. Yep. <laughs> Cheers. <laughs> and and then like I guess Francisco Danconio looks back into the back seat of the fucking helicopter and says, "Guys, we can make a worse uh, closing line than that, can't we?" <laughs> uh. They can, though. They're, they're going to quote Ayn Rand to actually yeah. close. <laughs> oh, is this really the ending from the book? This is the part of that speech from the book, yes. This is the dumbest possible ending in, in all of writing. You could not write a dumber ending. Dagny looks out over the country and the power is all going out because everybody's too stupid and they don't even know how to run the Quiznos without her. <laughs> and, and she goes, it's the end. And John Galt goes, no. It's the beginning. <laughs> yeah. it's, it's the beginning of the starving of the masses. Well, That's yeah, what it's, it's the, the beginning, beginning of yeah, that. So, so, really, so they just need to change the fuse. But yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's, it's the beginning for us. They all die because I would loan you my about. second perpetual motion machine, but it's feathers right now, so I can't. <laughs> right, unfortunately, I can't loan that to you. And then John Gore say no. Is, and then they fly away and you can see the Statue Jesus. of Liberty in the front. If they had a bigger CGI budget, a bald eagle would have landed on her fucking torch as it's, yeah. as it's panned away. God, that was so stupid. Oh, that's amazing. <laughs> oh, all right. Well, that, that's it. We made it through three movies, Cecil. This is like above USA. and beyond gas mask. USA. <laughs> <laughs> Who's with the USA? We uh, won. USA. No. So, Cecil, thank you so much for hanging out with us for the last three episodes. I know the listeners have really enjoyed it. I know we've really enjoyed it. I hope that you've <laughs> not hated it too much. <laughs> These are the worst <laughs> movies I've ever seen, but you guys made it absolutely so much fun. And thank you so much for inviting me along. It's been an absolute pleasure. Thank you. Awesome. And Cheers. well, that does it for our review Cheers. of the Atlas Shrug Trilogy. That's not going to do it for the episode just yet because we still need to lure you and us back in next week. So, Eli, tell us what's on deck. Well... Noah, it's Valentine's Day. And so what could be more lovely than a love story based on the book of Hosea? Oh, Jesus Christ. Yep. So by popular request, we'll be reviewing Redeeming Love. 
awesome. So with that to look forward to, we're going to bring episode 339 to a merciful close. Once again, a huge thanks to Cecil for three weeks worth of masochism. Be sure to check the show notes for links to his other projects, the Cognitive Dissonance podcast and the Season Liberally Cooking Show on YouTube. And a perhaps even huger thanks to all the Patreon donors that helps you make the show go. If you'd like to count yourself among their ranks, you can make a per episode donation at patreon.com slash godawful and thereby earn early access to an ad-free version of every episode. You can also help us a ton by leaving a five-star review and by sharing the show on all your various social media platforms. And if you enjoyed this show, be sure to check out our sibling shows, The Scathing Atheist, Citation D&D D Minus, and The Skeptic Credit wherever podcasts live. If you have questions, comments, or cinematic suggestions, you can email godawfulmovies at gmail.com. Legal services for this podcast are provided by the law offices of P. Andrew Torres. Tim Robson takes care of our social media. Our theme song was written and performed by Rod Slot and Gavu with Dress on Mars. All of the music was written and performed by our audio engineer, Morgan Clark, and was used with permission. Thanks again for giving us a chunk of your life this week. For Heath Enright and Eli Bosnick, I'm No Illusions, promising to work hard to earn another chunk next week. Until then, we'll leave you with a Breakfast Club close. John Galt and Cliven Bundy played with rubber dicks for a couple weeks and then they all got arrested. Yep. <laughs> the billionaires and concert pianists lived happily ever after until somebody's septic tank backed up. <laughs> <laughs> the evil government went on to invent Project G, which was waterboarding with a few extra toggles. And <laughs> <laughs> and a throttle. The D pad. John couldn't afford his rescue helicopter, so they kicked him out of the Atlantic. Yes! Just like he always wanted. Like he would have wanted. <laughs> what do I do? I hold on. Is this still part of it? <laughs> oh, no, oh, no, no. This okay, is that, I was like, that, that, that I was like, oh, okay. It's like, that seems like a weird toss <laughs> to the next line. <laughs> Now watch the marrow. Marrow. <laughs> Speaking of child porn, and then you spread the marrow on the cheese toast. <laughs> That's not marrow. That's yeah. oh, oh, everybody's going to go hot. silent when I say it's elbow. Super hot. It's okay. super hot. It's Thank super you, hot. Cecil. One yeah, person. I'm with you. Whatever. Cheers. So, Liars. Uh, cheers. So, <laughs> cheers. <laughs> cheers. 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 So, uh, Love you. Uh, I forgot what I was going to say. <laughs> <laughs> The preceding podcast is a production of Puzzle and the Thunderstorm, LLC. Copyright 2022. All rights reserved. The McDonald's is food you buckle in with your seatbelt deal. And there's no reason not to take that extra precaution. Because a meal from McDonald's is not just a meal. It's often your most precious cargo. Now get a free sausage McMuffin with egg when you download the McDonald's mobile app. ba da ba 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 McDonald's. I'm loving it. Free sausage McMuffin with egg valid one time through 4-3-2022 at participating McDonald's. Download and registration required. The McDonald's is food you buckle in with your seatbelt deal. And there's no reason not to take that extra precaution. Because a meal from McDonald's is not just a meal. It's often your most precious cargo. Now get a free sausage McMuffin with egg when you download the McDonald's mobile app. ba da ba 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 McDonald's. I'm loving it. Free sausage McMuffin with egg valid one time through 4-3-2022 at participating McDonald's. Download and registration required.